All right, put your big girl panties on. Hank Strange is live from the Big Daddy Gun Studio broadcasting. Ciao, Bella. My friend, the Italian stallion, <laughs> El Tenda Fabrizio, is in the building. <laughs> What's up, man? It's more like the Italian donkey, by the way. <laughs> they do everything at the shop, so they call me the Italian donkey. Oh, okay. Is that is, like is that like is donkey. that like a sexual thing? Because you got like the donkey, the Donkey Kong dong going That's a on. Thing. That might be a private thing, <laughs> oh. but work-wise, I'm, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty flexible. I do everything at work, so that, that might oh. be a good. Oh, thing. okay. Oh, so is that that's why they call you the Italian donkey? That's yeah. messed up. <laughs> yeah, okay. right, you know what? It's cool, man. Just listen. Um, as long as they're willing to make a banner or something for you, right? You know. I take it. I take it. I, I got dressed like I got dressed, I got dressed like Luigi several years ago with an AK-47. It's probably the best picture I ever took. I ever, ever. <laughs> oh, really? I have I've never seen that. I gotta find it. It's pretty awesome, man. Yeah. So for everyone who's joining us, uh, El Tenda is on YouTube. He has a YouTube channel. He's a gun guy. He's Italian. <laughs> If you, for now. if you, yeah, if you can't tell from the accent, uh, you know, yes, you're you're becoming an American, right? I'm in a pro I'm in a process, which unfortunately right now, uh, thank God. I mean, if I can say this, one of the one of the few, and don't get me wrong, one of the few bad things with the victory of Trump is that now everybody that is not never never applied for in 10, 15 years mm -hmm. or they legal. They're gonna try to become citizens, so that create a massive, massive, especially here in Illinois, in Chicago, there's a a, a massive amount. So that they create a big, uh, you know, uh, the system is already screw up over here. So it's slowing down everything. But yeah, I'm in the progress. So thank you. Yeah, that's uh, listen. It's um, yeah, it is weird. It's a weird thing that's happening. But that's the way everyone has to go. As someone who um, went through the process of getting, you know, of uh, of getting of legally immigrating to America, it didn't start out that way. To be honest with you, we came to we came to America with visas. Like we we I used to uh, before we lived in America, we were living in Nigeria. We lived in a bunch of different places. So we came here with a visa and everything legally landed at the airport and all that. And then we overstayed the visa and then we applied. Um, there was a company that sponsored my dad and the rest of the rest of the people in the family. So we applied, went through the whole process had to leave the country, come back in, got my green card, and then um, years later got my citizenship. So, you awesome. know, I, I know how it is, man. And yeah, the whole immigration system that we have here in America is like batshit crazy. Yeah, right? I mean, you know, the, I know that the civic test, I totally understand, I respect that. I mean, everybody should at least, I mean, I my mean, English is not uh, Cambridge, you know, or something like that, English, but, you know, people can understand me. At least I'm trying, you know. Yeah, you're, it's it's pretty good. I'm sure there's going to be some points in this conversation tonight that yeah. I don't understand you, but... We can make some, you know, end sign or something. You know? Yeah, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. We don't have any Italian translators, you know? I, we can work on that. I can I can start Spanish maybe if you want to. But, but you know, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, the best part of it. Uh, it's uh, that actually, if I can say that, is the respect you gain in by your friends youtube friends facebook friends when they're reading your post the way you think the way you get here the way you you know the way you integrate with the american you know way of life and everything you get a lot of respect mm -hmm. you not know, because of me, but i see other people and that's to me it's worth more than it's it's, uh, it's worth it you know what i mean i spent the process i went through the shots that i got you know you know few yeah. shots and come here <laughs> That was stupid, but that and the distance that I have to stay from my wife before I move over here, that is nothing compared to what we what I have over here with her, you know, my life right now mm -hmm. and the respect that I gain from, from my friends and everybody. Yeah, so it's, to you me, said it's, it's, like, it's worth the sacrifice, right? That's that's the land of the free. And what makes me sad sometimes is that some people, some people, eh, they live over here, they don't appreciate what they have, you know? And, and they keep speeding against the second amendment, which the first, you know, and they keep, you know, they don't care, you know, the big, you know, it's all related, you know, that it's sad, you know, because we, there are countries like Europe, specifically Italy, we don't have a second amendment. You got a constitution with the part of it that's actually about, it's about defending your freedom from tyrants and whatever, you know, which, which is a great thing, you know, most of the 
country nowadays do, especially dictatorship, they take the gun from people so they, mm -hmm. they can control them, which, mm -hmm. which is a thing don't realize. Sometimes think, oh, they're only for hunting. You don't need an R15 for, for that. Like, uh, I beg to differ. You know, it's mm -hmm. shotgun. I mean, you know, that's not, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a way of life. You know, you got to deal with these people too. And, and I understand that's why you got pressure over here. You know, there are people that are against you. You know, they're free to talk. You know, it's good discussing. Until it's a civil thing, I'm open to that, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I can learn from you. You can learn from me, you know. Maybe we can become friends. You can become more friendly with the Second Amendment and whatever else, you know. But right, exactly. So before we get, you know, I, I'd like to definitely talk about immigrating to America and all that stuff because I think that's something we have in common. Let's start with your background, man. Who are you? What part of? Obviously, you're from Italy. What part of Italy were you born in? H how'd you get into guns and all that? How'd you wind up here in America and with a right, I'm, YouTube gun channel? Sure. I'm from Venice, which is one of the ancient republic of Italy, one of the most ancient republic of Venice, which I'm proudly Venetian first and then Italian. No offense to my co-Italians, co but I... <laughs> right. Okay. Understood. We were independent. We, we, we were ruling the, the Adriatic Sea. Adriatic Sea, sorry. We opened the way the sea to China. So we are in a pretty important chapter of European history. So that being said, I grew up over there. And I, you know, I, I've been in the army for one year because we get drafted, which is not a big deal for Italy. Uh, I used to work for a chemical factory for, for a while. And I play airsoft for about 10 years. That's why my name came from nickname El Tenda. Because in Italian, Tenda means tent, you know, like camping, camping tent. Oh, okay. So okay. I used to work in a camping when I was younger. And the people, when they were playing airsoft, they couldn't remember my name. So the, they were asking for cover, you know, with a rifle, mm -hmm. rifle. So they go, well, that guy over there, that guy, El, El Tenda, I mean, like, oh, then, because Venetian is similar to Spanish. So mm -hmm. El Tenda means Il Tenda, the Tenda of the Tenda, whatever. So that's mm -hmm. where the name comes from. And um, I'm, uh, I always like guns. I grew up in the, I'm, I'm 44 years old. So I grew up in the Cold War era, in the Cold War era. era and I always liked, uh, you know, know your enemy stuff, you know, like reading magazines about guns and stuff, and tanks and airplanes, you know, doing hobby models. So I've always been into guns. Although in Italy, the gun culture is mostly nowadays hunting or three gun or IPA, you know, that stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Range, it's not really a, uh, like here, go to the range every Saturday, bling, bling, bling. Yeah, they don't have a lot of choices, you know. Mm -hmm. There's not many ranges anyway, they're closing most of them. And so I moved over here seven years ago, and I, I six years ago, sorry. I met my wife nine years ago, and um, funny enough, on, on MySpace, I don't know if you guys remember MySpace. <laughs> yeah, it's old school. <laughs> she says she was anti, no, she was looking for, uh, shopping for an Italian boyfriend. Oh, okay. Nice. So we've been in contact for a couple of years. We got common interest. She's a tattoo artist. I like tattoos. I like, we got the same common music interest in Fate No More, Motorhead, stuff like that. So we, we like books and, and movies. So we've been talking for a while, and then suddenly my factory closed down, and I had some laid out time. And uh, it was actually one the time when the dollar was really low, and I decided to take a flight to Chicago. And and we spent a weekend together, and then, and then I come back another time, then come back another time, then come back another time, you know, and then, you know, you know how it goes. Yeah. So I decided to decide that I found the right person for me. We've been together almost, almost two years. And I, I and we start the process for the for the finance visa, you know, like a wedding visa, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Step before the green card. So and I move over here, and you know, I had to wait one year before get a job, because unfortunately everybody come here in that process get a little bit under control, if you want to call it like that. Mm -hmm. And then I work for four years on depot. In the meantime, my part time job, and then I become full time after one year because. I have one thing, I had one thing that people, young people don't have, if you ask me, most of the time it's called work ethic, you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't think they even know what that means, my friend. <laughs> Especially when you're 40, close to 40, you know, and you're broke. Yeah. And you so, appreciate being in America. Yeah, that's it. That job. Like, most, you know, they keep yeah. saying, oh, you foreign come over here, still our job. I'm like, dude, not really. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, and then I started a YouTube channel for fun. Uh, in 2012, and the first video were pretty horrible, <laughs> but we're actually about prepping. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm still, I was more, I'm still interested in survival stuff, always been. 
yeah, especially with the airsoft, you do a lot of backpacking, testing gear, really good. Right. I always mm -hmm. been prepping, so I started as prepping, and then I got my even before my driving license, I got my FOID card, which is the card that you need in Illinois for purchase gun and ammunition. Okay. So I got that one even before my driving license. Couldn't care about less about driving. So I got that, and then you know I start looking at such video, uh, OCMC videos, you know Iraqi veteran video, and I start. Hey, you know what? I like this stuff. I should start top, start doing it too. You know? And you know, little by little, I went to. Uh, that being said, I went to SHOT Show uh, the first time in 2013 with my friend at Tactical 73 in Italy. They have, it's a shop in Italy, so I collaborated with them, you know, mm -hmm. networking. Right. And, and, I met, and I met the first time the OSUMC, Instagram channel, uh, Feto Destiny. And then I think we met the year after, I believe, me and you. I'm not sure about it. Or maybe Lola the year after, me and you last year. I don't remember. But Yeah. Okay. Anyway. I become good friend with everybody. They invite me every year to the Iraqi veteran shooting, but I cannot make it because it's for me. It's a lot of money, you know. It's day that I'm working, I'm losing, and trip. You know, I, I'm 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 a small channel. I don't even monetize my video anymore. I don't care. I want to be free from every kind of you know. All the YouTube drama. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And I tell everybody, you come to my I mean, my channel. It's like if you go and hit a cake uh, a cake or your mama house, a grandma house. It might not look good, but it's tasty. You know? <laughs> okay, I understand. That's a good analogy. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah. Okay, so um, so in the gun business, uh, I believe you're working with DR Guns, right? DR Gun LS LLC. Yep. yep. Right. So I, I don't know. I'm sure you mentioned it that you're in Illinois. Um, Correct. We are did located. you say you, you did you say roughly what part of Illinois you're in? I'm in Lake County. Lake County area. Okay. It's 45 minutes from uh, Chicago. Right. I live in Kukanem and I move out because gun rules and crime rate was a little bit frightening and taxes especially. They got taxes and everything. You fart, they tax you. you yeah, know? I bet. <laughs> so, yeah. Car carb it's called carbon taxes. Yeah, I guess so. So <laughs> yeah. we're located in Lake Zurich, Illinois, and, and we, we manufacture um, a little bit of everything. We sell we sell complete guns to through our site, but mostly to uh, through sorry um, shops. Local shops, French shops, that we know. Yeah, we manufacture most of our stuff, upper lowers, billet, low, billet, you know, from big piece yeah. of aluminum, and and we make also bulk carriers, charging handles, stuff like that, and we sell them on our website. As a matter of fact, if you go on my Facebook page, there is a um, a discount code right now. Fifty. If you look up for you guys, if you want to go and buy anything. Okay, so it's on your Facebook page, and your right. Facebook page is what? El Tenda Vianeo. Okay, El Tenda Vianeo. So DR Guns is like a relatively new name and company, but the guys behind DR Guns have been in the gun business for a while. Correct. Uh, I'm going to be fe featuring some stuff from them. They make hand guards and things like that. They sent us some really lightweight hand guards that we need to put into a build or something. All of that stuff just takes time. And I think, uh, what is it that you guys, uh, don't you have like a nine or something like that? Yeah, you have a... I got one right, right sorry, right yeah. here. We, we just released our nine billet lower. Uh, okay. It's right over here. Yeah, let's take a look at that. So you got to think about this on, on this gun, uh, except for furniture, sights, and, sorry, and triggers, we make pretty much everything. Oh, okay. Just move it past the camera a little bit. Yeah, come up a little. Just come up. Like uh, that? No, the gun. Yeah, lift the gun up a little so we can get a look at it. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Yeah, just yeah, move it up and down. There you go. Okay, so you're making a nine millimeter. So do you, with that is that using uh, Glock magazines? Correct, correct. Okay, do you get last round bolt hold open? No, the future we don't have this feature yet. Okay, we might be offering the future. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a uh, well, let's put it this way. I heard that some nine that do that they don't work all the time. Yeah, I think there's like been several problems with people trying to sort that out. Some people say that it does work on their guns, mm -hmm. and then it doesn't work all the time. Is that because of the uh, the slight um, angle that a Glock magazine needs to be on? I believe so. I'm not 100 percent sure about it. I, I okay. am like we are. You know, I'm, I know that some company makes a lower with a bolt open feature. Some company make an upper, and I believe that somehow disengaged. Uh, you know. In, sorry, engage the bolt with the last round, you know, mm -hmm. because you can keep the bolt open, you know, like the gun is, of course, unloaded, like all of them, they're going to show right. you. Yeah. I can engage the bolt like you do normally. You pull your charging handle and you pretty much, you know, 
you can you can hold it, but it, again, it don't, doesn't have that the feature specifically. Yeah, uh, we are trying to figure out something. Uh, I'm, I mean, I almost. I'm play. I mean, when I'm kind of busy. I'm work. I do a little bit of everything, but I'm trying to figure out something by myself. I even trying to modify something in order to use every kind of Glock magazine. So some okay. Glock, like the ATS, they can be a little bit, you know, stiffy sometimes. So the key, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, in mine, mine per se, mine is not a gun that we offer like that, because I did some personal uh, um, modifications, you know. So I use a navier buffer, mine is a 7.5 ounces, which is really heavy. Okay. When I'm shooting, the gun doesn't move. I mean, it's, it goes back on target like right away, which with a nine sometimes can be a little uh, problem. And, and on mine, use a CAC, uh, uh, sorry, buffer tube with the, you know, the blade, with the blade stock, uh, sorry, brace. Brace, yeah. And I mean, and, and I changed a couple of things. I mean, it's other than that, it's our stock rifle, 10, you know, 10 inch barrel, and you know, nine inch handguard that we make, by the way, they're really light handguards. They're, I call them, I mean, dummy proof, because everybody can install them. The barrel nut, it's easy. You slide the barrel nut, you take a Magpul wrench or the caster, uh, caster nut wrench, torque it at 60, you're good to go. That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you guys sent me one of those. They, they are very light. Yeah. and. Uh, so. and uh, yeah, it's a good product. We are trying to push, and we are trying. You know, I'm trying to uh, with Dave is my the owner. I'm, we we are trying to interact. You know, he knows that I I know a little bit about you know gun 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 community. I guess you're gonna call it like that. Mm -hmm. so I'm trying to reach out to several friends of mine, you know, and promote our product as much as possible. I cannot do too much because I don't think it's fair that I talk about our stuff. You know, mm -hmm. I still. Plus, I pay for everything anyway, so I don't get stuff for free. Let's put it in this way, except for giveaways, you know, of course. But, right. Okay. But you know, which yeah. by the way, it's, it's upcoming. I got a one thousand. Well, it's, I'm over one thousand three hundred now, but it's one. It's gonna be pretty soon a one thousand three hundred giveaway coming up, and there's a bunch of company that donate stuff. Uh, okay, so you have that going on on the YouTube channel, right? Pretty soon. I'm waiting for the last items, and I got stuff from the Argans, of course. Chai Town Tactical, Crab Custom, uh, right. Vulture Equipment, Vulture Equipment Works, which make knives and all the stuff, but they're going to send me some cleaning products and something. Circle 10 AKs, uh, Century Arms, uh, Tough Products, um, 556 Tactical, Strike Industries, and then some other YouTuber. And I don't. I hope I didn't forget anybody and apologize. Oh, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a big giveaway for my channel. Yeah. yeah. A, big, a pretty big giveaway. I mean, more, okay. I mean okay. value wise, you know what I mean? Right. right. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I'm getting, getting a little, little bit of an echo there. there. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure what happened. Um, no idea either, but. Yeah. This is why we wear the headsets, Altenda. I, I got a headsets. That helps, that helps eliminate that. I don't know if you have any headsets there. I want to check, but it's too late again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We'll make it. It seems like it went away. Probably you, your volume went up a little bit too loud. Let me take it down a little bit. No, yeah. As long as you can hear me, that's cool. So yeah, you've got the giveaway going on. So you know, I want to encourage people to go check out your YouTube channel and all that kind of stuff. So now let's let's um, let's talk about guns a little bit. What are your favorite kind of guns, man? Well, you should know that. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, I know. I'm, I'm, it's a leading question. Just kidding, just kidding. Just you know, I know it's AKs. I was busting your chops. <laughs> yeah, AK, AK. I do. I, I told my boss I gotta have my AK. When a friend is like, "Oh, can you help me fix my AR this week?" I'm like, "Hell no, I'm not doing it." <laughs> I, do, I do some uh, plain English Dis disintoxications. Mm -hmm. A little bit from my AR. Yeah, I like AKs in general. Eastern Bloc guns. I wish I can own more, but you know they yeah. become. So when you were in the when you were in the military in Italy, uh, what kind of guns did you use? You want to hear something funny? What? M1 Garand. Oh really? <laughs> M1 Garand. Yeah. yeah. Actually, the army issue gun uh -huh. that time was a BM59. They were switching from the BM59, which you know it's the M1 Garand converted in 308 with a 20 round magazine. Actually, a pretty nice rifle. Okay. So we were switching from that one to the SC79. Which is the Beretta 556 rifle? What my unit, my what I'm supposed to do was supposed to do. We were in the defense line with the with the Yugoslavia, okay, they were in Austria, whatever. So my main gun was actually, and um, mine specifically was um, there was two machine gun close to me, MG4259, and then there was a 90 pound, I believe, and all the from the 40s, uh, a navy gun. 
So it's like a big navy gun, and it's concrete. You know, and it's supposed to stop tanks and whatever. Most of the time, right. at uh, bridges, you know, blocking roads, because mm -hmm. that line was so obsolete that our rules was once once we were done with the 16 round and we have the two eight round uh, clips, mm -hmm. you're supposed to grab the Russian guns because you know at that point we don't have any <laughs> any more resources. But okay. I was, but I have to chance to play with a bunch of them in the army. I, one of my I always like I said I always like guns, so they put me in the armory. Most of the time, and I used to play with a bunch of old stuff, new stuff, and mm -hmm. I had a good time, you know. So, but, do you have like an M1 Grand here? Hell no, I wish. Oh, okay. right. <laughs> I can apply for the American the civilian marketship program. I think they call it. Yeah. Yeah, I think you. Yeah, I think you still have a. You know, you still have time. I need to do it myself, man. I need Sounds to apply great. for that thing. Walter is always telling me about it. I need to get off my butt and get it done. Yeah, I'm even M1 carbine. I'll take whatever is World War II. I love World War. II. I mean, old guns. I mean, they're they're you know that's sexy. Let's face it. Yeah. You know? Okay. But the sexiest gun to you is the AK, huh? Yeah. Well, don't ask me which one because I'm gonna start the fight with somebody. So mm -hmm. I can tell you the two one. They're the sexiest one. Okay. Well, yeah. So let's show us some AKs that you have in your collection. Let's uh, okay. take a look at what you got here. Not in preference order. Just the first one I'm grabbing, okay? I don't want to start the fight between Mark and, and, and Jim Fuller. Mark grabs <laughs> a friend oh, okay. of mine, friend of mine. So we have yes. a K 13 which you know, I think, right? Yeah, very nice gun. Yeah, with a Vapor receiver. Yeah, uh, so that, is that a Mod 2? My one is actually, funny enough that you ask, my one is a Mod 2. Uh, I don't know if you can see it over here. Let me lift it, sorry. Mod 2, it's called SL. So mine was actually a prototype, okay? Oh. Okay. So now crab with a new line of rifle, which they might not be Vepra. I mean, they might be for now, they might become something different. We don't know yeah. yet. Yeah, because we got that whole Vepra thing going on. Right. They're going to offer, this one was a like a nice piece of metal, but they're going to do a nicer job. So they're going to offer this as a mag release and mm -hmm. a magwell, as you can see over here, like you saw already in the KV. So this one is a help a lot compared to the previous system because you can take a magazine and just, you know, Disconnected easily. You take your magazine and just clash over here. Your magazine fly over. You can put a new magazine. So it makes. Right. Sense. Okay. So they did it for me. It was something that were working, but I, I talked with Mark and. Um, well, it's kind of hard to say now. Uh, what, I was talking with Mark and a good friend of us, Tom, which recently passed away. Um, I mean, last winter. Yeah, and I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he was a good, a good guy, man. I love that guy. Oh, yeah, I was like a brother to me, but like everybody. I mean, I don't know anybody can talk. Bad thing about my uh, Tom, sorry. But yeah, anyway, Tom's we're, good guy. we're talking about it, and I have a problem with my finger. I screw up my finger with a belt sander, so I'm missing. It's kind of, you know, bad shape. I don't know if you can see it. But. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, man, you took a good chunk out of that finger. <laughs> so they, I couldn't use their system, which is very nice. So they, we designed, no, we designed, we cannot talk about it. And Mark was like, you know, I don't know if I want to do it, you know, so like, do me a favor, at least do it on mine. You know? <laughs> and then, and then I'm assuming they figure out that it's a, they might offer it. I'm assuming it might be an, an, an extra charge. I might, they might make a model like this. So it's going to be a brand new, it's going to be, I think they call it, if you look up my video, one of my video, I'm actually talking about it with uh, Simon, which is the new guys in charge of the public relation. Okay. Uh, you're going to call it KV13 Mod 2 SL, I believe, yeah. if I'm mistaken. And just for just for people out there, if you guys don't know, uh, one and of the, one of the uh, a good reason to subscribe to Altenda is that he's right there with Krebs Custom, so he get you get a lot of the scoops, right? You get to show this stuff first. Yeah, I beat you up too. Yeah. No, that's I cool. Am. That's cool, man. You know, I can't hate on you for that, man. That's cute. You know, I watch your videos. You know, <laughs> I watch your video too. Yeah. <laughs> My coincidence. Yeah. But you know, I like busting people. Chop. Don't don't get me wrong. Right. I like to. I'm a funny person, but you know, yeah. And and Tom invited me. As a matter of fact, for for the I was one of the first actually filming it. And and when the mod two uh, mod two come out, and I live like literally fifty minutes, so I, I go out to lunch sometime with, with with Simon, which is a good friend of mine, and Mark. We spend some time together, and I, I always tell everybody if you if you have any chance and luck lucky enough to talk with Mark, it's like uh, uh, to me it's like priceless. You know, I talk with him, he knows yeah. everything, he show you, and I explain you how to do stuff. It's like worthless. And the same thing to the only you know we are really close. I'm a good friend with Jim Fuller too with Rifle Dynamics. Mm -hmm. The other problem we live, of course, far away. Yeah, and Jim's I, in Jim's in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, and I have one of these rifles too. I have okay, so yeah, man, you're 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 a dyed in the wool AK guy. If you also yeah. have a rifle dynamics gun, 
Yeah, I hate Bologna sandwich for a year, but then I can buy one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, if that's what you have to do to get it, man, because I don't have one. So there you go. So what? which one do you have? The f um, uh, well, you know, they use uh, as a base, they use, of course, they used to, I don't know, they still, I'm not sure about it. They, they used to use arsenals. Mm -hmm. So that's their version of the, um, the rifle, dynamic rifle with the, in 545. They're both in 545, sorry, I didn't mention the other one. Oh. I'm a 545 guy. Okay, AK-74, yeah, man, that's a beautiful round. You know, so this one, it's, uh, of course, the, you know, 51, it's, uh, and, uh, they, they make it, and I uh, was lucky enough to win, actually, a gift card at the rifle, a raffle, a gift mm -hmm. card, so I help, they help out with the purchase. They help me out, too, you know. Both of them, both the company, they've been very supportive with, with, when I purchase it, because, you know, cool. I, I'm, 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 I think I'm a good person, you know, I'm very nice with everybody, and, and I don't, like, pushy asking stuff or, or no, or, you know, and, and, and I mean, it's the way of life. If you meet me here, you, you saw me a short show. I don't think I'm any different than what we are now. I mean, talking right now. I mean, that's yeah. You're not. You're not. You're not just in this for the guns. I know there's some people that just do this to get free guns and stuff like oh, that. No. You're genuinely know. into this stuff. No, I mean, if I get a good deal, well, why not? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I'm I... not. I'm not knocking free guns, man. I mean, we. You know, I've given away some guns myself. Oh, you know, there's nothing wrong with some free guns. <laughs> I don't get a lot of stuff for free. I might get I might get some product, you know, here and there. You know, I work I work with I've been working with some company, I don't know if I can mention it for years, you know. I've been working with talon grips that keep sending me stuff, which are little product, but it's not even the, the value of the item, you know, mm -hmm. but it's the mean behind it, you know, the support that they give you, you know. Mm -hmm. Strike industries, they always send me stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, my friend of five five six tactical, same story. Uh, and and then you know and then and some and some, many other companies tough product too and i've been sending me a bunch of stuff you know i understand you know i'm a small channel i can't pretend to get a lot of stuff and i don't even ask for it. you know i i ask them hey you want something you need to review don't send it to me i'll send it back to you you need to give it to me same story with circle 10 ak they send me a few product they always send me stuff i review them they like the review i'm happy chaitan tactical same story vulture equipment same story right. i told them hey, I don't do a lot of video editing. I don't have time. I have a 40 hour job. I got to take care of the house because my wife got work schedules. So I got to clean around, do, you know, stuff. I got to take out the dog and, you know, taking care of my, my collection stuff, you know, and, and, yeah. uh, you know, I noticed, I'm, you, I noticed you're, you're also into toys because anyone bit. that's watching or for the folks who are not watching on iTunes that are just listening to this, there is an awesome collection. It looks like of toys behind El yeah. here, man. It's insane. It's likely, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I can move the computer, but uh, it's yeah. kind of connected to a screen. But I know so if what? So okay. So let's let's like segue into the toys for a second, man. What kind of toys do you? How long have you been collecting uh, toys? Well, and what kind of toys do you collect? I collect. I used to in Italy. There's always been difficult finding stuff. Okay. So when I was a kid, I grew up with Master Universe for a uh, short time. Okay. But so were, he man, he man. Correct. But they were really expensive, and, and the, the only one we used to get for cheap were with some Mexican, oh sorry, Spanish comics and weird packaging. I was okay, so He Man, He Man, uh, Masters of the Universe was really big in Italy. Yeah, especially this guy over here, Skeletor. I have a, Skeletor. I have a, yeah, let's let, let uh, put put Skeletor back up there. Let's lock it on that for a second. I have a tattoo of him somewhere. I don't know if it, it's hard to to see probably, but I have a tattoo of Skeletor too. So yeah, that's. Yeah. Uh, it's a classic. Uh, yeah, just hold it still for one second. There we go, Skeletor. Is that the glow? Is that the glow in the dark face? <laughs> uh, actually, that's actually the glow in the dark is actually Scar glow. Yeah, which is so, actually pretty cool. Yeah. Well, that's in the cabinet. I mean, in obviously, cabinet. you grew up in the '80s, right? <laughs> yeah, and then you got the the rarest one, which is one of the rarest, which is uh, Italian. Oh, I'm glad that's the Italian uh, Scar glow. I mean, it's sorry, Scar no, laser Skeletor. But this one, the light, the highs, glow. When you you know, see you move the staff and the eyes goes up, okay, lights up. Cool, cool. It's a kind of difficult to find. This one was only made right. in, in Italy. See, I grew so, up in the eighties, you know, and you know, and uh, due to the fact that I mean, I never missed a day of school. I never had, I never, had, I, I always had food on my table, you know. But mm -hmm. you know, always was always something, you know, Christmas, you know, birthday. And the the problem in Italy, we have so much different wave of stuff that that, that uh, to me, a master. They pass away pretty quick. My favorite toy when I was a kid actually were Green Army Men. And I'm talking about the collectible one, the nice looking one. You know, Italian, Ashi, they're famous company, Italian company. So they make uh, 
Japanese, Vietnamese, Americans, you know, all kind the, of... The, the uh, very detailed green army, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to have 5,000 list of those. I used to put a mortar behind, a machine gun on the side, you know, I was yeah. like... <laughs> I mean, what, what guy out there, man, that's in his 40s never played with green army, man? I know, I, you know... Well, depend. Yeah, <laughs> because they were some of them were really detailed. I know here there's probably some stores like uh, the dollar stores had the real cheap ones that the yeah, molding and all that wasn't very good. But there were there were some very uh, detailed yeah. ones out there, right? Some of them were Italian company, so right. they make was to buy. There was an Italian company called Atlantic. They even sell stuff in the United States and Germany and France in the early 80s, late 70s. But you know. And then when I move over here, I at the beginning I used to I start collecting Hot Wheels because in Italy an Hot Wheel is like two dollar fifty versus ninety nine cents over here. Let's give you an idea. So I used mostly I collect muscle cars. You know, uh, I love El Caminos. I mean, I love El Caminos. I have all the possible versions of El Caminos. And so then you have a you have a big muscle car collection. Now, just just one second before you go sure. forward here, you you before we go past the um, Masters of the Universe He Man collection, mm -hmm. did you just collect Skeletor? Do you have He Man? Do you have I any of them? I'm missing, I'm missing a few rarest ones that cost a fortune, and I, I don't um, justify spending three thousand dollars in a toy. Oh, okay. Uh, what about the chicks? You got any of the chicks? Like, let me see. I'm trying to remember the chicks. It was it was it Shira? Shira? I'm trying Shira to remember. Was, was uh, a, a, I got uh, Evelyn, which is the Evel oh, Evelyn. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> that's my preferred one. <laughs> okay, the that's that's a glow in the dark Evelyn right there. Who we do? Actually, yeah. the stuff glow, does glow in the dark, actually, by the way. Yeah. And then I have uh, Tila and Sorceress over there in the castle. So I, I kind of display my stuff. If you guys would go back on one of my videos, there's actually my collection. And I kind of set up everything. So I got the castle with some figure. I buy, I'm an ox, uh, um, oh, um, obsessed with everything with Skeletor. I even have a tattoo, like I said. Mm -hmm. And um, I collect even loose ones. I build an army of them, just loose ones. So I got like 20 or 30 of them, but I have most of the figures. I collect Hot Wheels, uh, though nowadays they kind of lose a little bit of interest, you know, they're not coming out with a nice uh, packaging, you know? Yeah, so did you ever see the He-Man movie? The Dolph Lundgren one? Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. It was horrible, but I actually like it, man. That's yeah, I mean, that's, you know, a, that's you a know, classic. Uh, was that it? Was that late 80s or, or, or early 90s? 87. 87? Okay. It was yeah. the late the latest attempt by uh, Mattel to sell their line. As a matter of fact, they come out with that, with some, which I have in the cabinet, some specific ones for that series. I collect everything. I mean, and uh, but then, you know, like every collector, you find something new. Now I start collecting Funko Pops, which are, you know, if you know what they are. The little guys, I see if I have one close to me. Oh, I probably are, know what you're talking about, but... Um... These are actually Dorbs, which are... There's more oh, of right. it. Okay, cool. I, I okay. I've seen those. The yeah. form, you know, so they got a master universe, of course, one. But then you start buying the one from I don't know, the Great Lebowski, I don't know, the clock orange work, you know what I mean? Or you know, full metal jacket. I don't know. So that's always something. I, I'm yeah. kind of obsessive, obsessive, compulsive when I about toys, you know. I, that's and I told my wife, listen, I cannot afford them when I was a kid. Let me enjoy it now, you know. So you know. Yeah, know. listen. There's nothing wrong with that, man. Everyone's got to get stuff out of their system, you know. I mean, and I, uh, and I, most of us, we don't. We're not just into one thing, you know. It's cool that you're into guns, you're into toys, you know. Um, yeah, nothing I, wrong with that stuff, man. Honestly, it's it's. Let's put it this way, okay. The fact you have a YouTube channel, and now I'm doing more video about toys, okay? Because I want to show also the people that we are not. Oh, they're all gun nuts and everything, you know. Like, no, we are not one people, you know. Yeah, we're we, we're multi-dimensional. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I couldn't have like 75, no 75, wish. <laughs> 10 AKs, you know, it's pointless. I'm, you know, I don't have time to shoot all of them. I'm at the point I'm like, I'd rather play. No, 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 hold on a second. There's nothing wrong with having 10 AKs. <laughs> you, know, but, uh, you know what I mean? Right? <laughs> no, no, I'm just messing with you. I yeah, wish. I understand. But, you know, you get at the point that you get, this, let's put this point, you get a point, you buy a crab custom, okay, <laughs> and you buy a rifle dynamics. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. I two. take it back. I take it back, man. I take it back, okay? You you don't have to keep making us jealous with the fact that you not only own a Krebs custom, that you also own a rifle dynamics. We get it. You, you're the man. <laughs> you got to have the two of the, the two of the, the yeah, you know, I see. The best. and I always, you know, but what I'm saying is, if you, then you have your cheap ones, and yeah. you look at them like, what the f what I'm doing with this? Yeah. So, so that's a good way for me to segue into a question that we're getting. Uh, someone wants to know what do you think of the Century Arms RAS forty seven? 
I never shoot one. I got common friends that work at Century Arm. I can't talk shit because I never shoot it, honestly. I heard discordant reviews, you know? Yeah. I was buying, mm -hmm. I would like to have one and try one of these days. I mean, sometimes this review, they shoot three or 4,000 around, doesn't apply to me. I don't have 4,000 around no ammo on end. I heard they got to fix some stuff. I mean, honestly, I, if I was picking up a Century Arm, you know, I'd, I'd probably go for a Zastava, you know what I mean? The Yugo ones. Mm -hmm. Maybe the new, you know, I'm not, not, I'm, no, I don't bash companies, okay, if I never try their stuff, you know, because I heard somebody saying stuff, you know, doesn't mean necessarily, because let's let's face it, okay, I'm not talking about you, some people on YouTube, you know, sometimes I get the impression there is a little bit of, you know, work behind, you know, when they do the views or stuff, you know, people, you know, oh, this gun, it's all fuck up, oh, but it's still shooting, it's still shooting straight, I'm like, oh, dude, you just said the gun is fuck up. You know, so yeah, but I have a mechanic. Um, okay, uh, go ahead, hold that up so we can see that. Elite. Is that the is that the one of the new ones that's come out? The can't okay, yeah. elite. elite, elite. I mean, everybody's bashing it, you know, and and because uh, they put the guide rod for the nine by 19 by 124 grain, okay, because they use 124 NATO ammo in Turkey, in Turkey okay. Mm -hmm. But when they ship it over here, they made a mistake, and they, they didn't know that. So the problem with the gun was, I mean, at least with mine, okay? I'm talking about mine. I know people have problems with some other issues, safety, other stuff. Mine, I got zero issues with the gun. I changed, I called my friend at Century Arm, they sent me a new rod. The only problem with the previous gun rod, and sorry, you know what I mean, gun rod, was actually the weak, weak ejection, you know, very weak. Okay. But other, than that, other than that, the trigger is fucking amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I love the gun. I mean, it's it's nice to shoot. And if, I, I can't talk shit about it, you know? Yeah. But, and what was the price of that gun? Well, I got a dealer, you know. You know. Okay. You got, okay. Oh, you nothing guys. wrong with that. Yeah. Okay. I get it. No, I understand. Yeah. Listen, I think there's lots of people that like those out there. You know, there's there's nothing wrong with that. Um. Okay. Someone wants you to show us the Punisher van. You know oh, the Punisher yeah. Van? yeah. That was a funny, that was a, well, I was looking for this one since 1991. Because I'm, I'm not sorry if I go away, but I gotta pull it from the. No, that's from, okay. From the, from my museum. Yeah, <laughs> man, I could. You know what? I can see you've got like a ton of Skeletors back there, man. The whole shelf. Oh yeah, there's more on than the cabinet. There's more over here. There's more over there. Are you kidding me? Then you didn't see the Funko yet and the Hot Wheels. I do believe I just pulled the display cabinet. They hold 200 cards, and that's just part of a collection. So I got probably 1,000 Hot Wheels, but uh so that's the van i don't know if you can see it yeah just uh go back a little bit so we can see the whole yeah there you go okay very cool very cool turn it around and he has so this is from 91 yes sir so i was looking for this one for years and i found one mint in the box for pre i mean it wasn't really expensive considering it has the yeah. box in the so speed. what um what vehicles is that supposed to be a ford that van uh, yeah, like the eighteen one, kind of. Yeah, probably. Oh. Yeah, like the eighteen van, and it has, you know, the machine guns on the to uh, machine gun over here on the top, and pop the the, the, the you call it the roof, pop mm -hmm. out. You open yeah, the like so a turret that comes out through the roof. Uh huh. And, and then you have uh, some machine gun on the door. There is an Uzi and M sixteen, whatever over here. It's kind of hard to tell. There is a cannon that come out with a trailer. Uh, you got guns coming out from the front. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember those. Uh, so, so was that expensive? You said it was. It took you a while to find it. Was that ex like where did you find that on eBay? eBay, you gotta look around. You know, eBay is a matter of making an offer. Know the see the the toy collect collect collecting. Sorry, thing. You gotta know the prices and everything. You gotta good at bidding. Um, I've been. Um, I go at twice a year at the Chicago Toy Show, which is one of the biggest in America. Mm -hmm. okay. And I look around. I look YouTube video. Okay, there's a bunch of collectors in YouTube. Uh, for example, uh, Spar Master Universe, the best collectors. It's Me it's a Mexican guy actually. It's called Med Ant Med Hunter Juguetes in Mexican, of course. Antiguos. Okay, it's amazing. He collects everything from the 50 50s, sorry, to the 80s. Yeah, I think that means like antique toys or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah it's mm -hmm. like a super knowledgeable. It's been an American TV show too, by the way, with the Toy Hunter, by the way, the American Toy Hunter show. And you know, and I watch video. There's a bunch of community on Facebook, so we share knowledge, we trade stuff. You know, it's a, it's a big like gun community. Same thing. We help each other. You know, 
Yeah, very cool. I see because I follow you on Instagram, and I see you're always putting up, uh, you're throwing up pictures on Instagram and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's a kind of a, um, I don't know if it's an obsession, but <laughs> my wife's complaining sometimes. You know, can be words, can be gambling, can be you know. Yeah, listen. There's always a lot of things you can do with your money. You know, you could be going to a strip club or something like that. You know, you could be you could be smoking crack with your money. You know, there's a bunch of horrible things that you, there's nothing wrong with putting the money into guns, toys, cars, and all that kind of stuff. You know. No, plus you know it's somehow except for old tools maybe. I mean, some of the old tools maybe. The Master Universe stuff. And Funko, not really, except for them. They can cost a lot of money, some of them, because they become collectible. But the Master Universe stuff is an investment. Mm -hmm. Because some of them, the price, I started collecting them in 2013, when I went the, the second time to the Chicago toy show. You know how it goes. You know, I buy the bad guys for Skeletor, and then, oh, no, let me buy that one, too. Oh, it's only $10. Let me buy that one. Then, no, 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 no. And then, you know, little by little. And... Um, you know the price one item i don't know loose skeleton used to be five bucks okay uh yeah. not complete you know like no arm nothing just for fun put it on your shelf oh remind my childhood now the same one they want 15 20 bucks which is ridiculous you know mm -hmm. so yeah so the prices are going because you know what like masters of the universe has really disappeared i mean i don't think we stand even though they're bringing back a lot of old stuff i don't think we stand any chance of them like putting out a movie or something like that. I mean, and probably if they actually, did, it would it would make it it, it may maybe push up the price. Actually, they will. They will. 2018. 2018. They don't know yet who's gonna be the producer between Marvel and Sony. They gotta decide who's gonna who have the copyright. Okay, DC, so sorry. who's gonna play who's gonna play He Man? They found a guy actually. It's pretty 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 close. The problem is gonna be Skeletor, I think, because that's the best. At all, you know, skeleton is the best. I mean, it's my yeah, but you can put on prosthetics and stuff like that yeah. and make someone look real. There's yeah, good stuff to, to make. Like back when they made that uh, He Man Masters of the Universe, I think it was called Masters of the Universe, the movie. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the makeup and stuff like that that they had really wasn't the best. Uh, I forgot the name of the guy that was in that movie, but I still like it. It's a good, fun, fun movie to watch. Langella, I think. Langella, Lang Langella. Frank Langella. Was it Frank Langella in that yeah. mask? Yeah. So cool. All right, you know what? Listen, since you're a, you're an Italian, uh, have you seen uh, Wired has this story about Italy and guns? I put it in our private, like here in the window. There's a um, there's a uh, there's a chat. I don't know if you see that. But if you click on it, I put a link to it. Let me there's open a, it. Yeah, there's a story from Wired, and it's called uh, "Inside Italy's Thriving Gun Culture." Yes, okay. Italy. <laughs> So it's talking about yeah, well, um, Oliana, an idyllic village on the island of Sardinia. Um, so this guy's talking about that and, um, you know, how there's, uh, like, you can rent a bunch of guns and things like that, right? You know, Sardinia has always been, I can't open it, it's kind of slow my internet, but um, mm -hmm. Sardinia has always been a, um, a quite uh, um, close uh, um, re region of Italy, you know, like mm -hmm. Venice, you know. We kind of proud of our. And there's always been a tradition in the family to have a, at least a, a, a shot, a double barrel shotgun, you know, for hunting. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. the gun ownership has been normal somehow over there. Uh, nowadays, uh, concealed carry is pretty much impossible in Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, impossible, mm -hmm. unless you have a good reason for, it, like uh, afraid of kidnapping. Owner gun, uh, uh, gun ownership is is a pain in the ear. And again, don't quote me. I don't remember all the laws that been there. Put the keep yeah. changing. The yeah, but, but it, it's it seems like from this article that this that there's there's um like tour, tourist stuff that you can do. People still have a okay. desire to shoot guns, um, yeah. you know, because you, you could take these things away or make it really difficult. People still want to do it. I think mm -hmm. the guy that they are talking about though in this article is kind of I'm, I'm, he's I don't really think he's a gun guy, but he went out there because he says uh. Here's this is just a, an excerpt from this article. It's kind of long, but I thought it'd be interesting since you're on. Hot little pieces of ammunition were falling from the sky onto my shirt. I got really scared, <laughs> and when I'm really scared, I start laughing. It was weird. So this yeah, guy went shooting with those guys, and he I guess he wasn't used to it, and you know uh -huh. the sounds and the uh, shell casings yeah, and sure. things like that. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, this, this put, unfortunately, from what I understand, again, what I hear from my friend at the Tactical 73, the company, we interact, of course. Um, for example, stupid thing as you got to register your magazine, okay? And if the magazine can be more than 29 rounds, 
So you gotta Wait, pin. You have to register your magazine. Yeah, you gotta. I believe so. Don't call me on that again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. But you, gotta, you gotta tell them for sure how many ammo you own. How much ammo? Sorry, you you own, including gunpowder, that calculate as ammo. You know. Wow. Right. Okay. So that's stupid. When they told me, I got to say, oh, you know, I can't have more than 600 rounds. I laughed my ass off. I'm like, yeah. Oh, so, oh, wait. They said you cannot have more than 600 rounds? <laughs> like that. You know, a number, you know, a number. You know, like, right. I laughed my ass off. I'm like, that's my weekend shooting that I do normally. You know, that's, you know, but, you know, it's, and then the 30 round magazine has to be pinned, pin to 29 mm -hmm. round. Okay. Otherwise, you all can own 20 round magazines, you know, and be fine, you know. Uh, for example, funny enough, the M9, uh, sorry, the M9, the 9 millimeter um, pistol in Italy, sorry, they can have a 12, uh, 11 half, 12 inch barrel and with a stock. So it's mm -hmm. not considered an SBR. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that's it. That's that. I don't know why. I don't know why we have SBR stuff here in America. It's kind of stupid. Yeah. 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 I mean, and, and that, and that. Funny enough, the 9 millimeter AR built in nine is considered a pistol. No, they had a pistol. Pistol, a pistol. Okay, even if you have a stock on it, like an actual stock. So you can have a thirty-two round magazine. Oh, so it's based on the caliber. Correct. Okay. But but has to be a nine by twenty-one, like the Israeli caliber, not oh. nine by ninety, because nine by ninety is a military caliber. Oh, I see. Okay. You can you can have seven. You can't have uh, seven point six two by fifty-one. You gotta have a three oh eight. The barrel they export to Italy, which are really common nowadays in America too, they can't be, they couldn't be 5.56, five, they had to be 2.23 wild. That's okay. how they, that's how they, you know, they went, you know, around the, the, the Yeah, the, the workaround, the, mm -hmm. the loophole, right, okay, cool. Yeah, but, you know, but most of the people do IPA, uh, three gun, you know, stuff like which I'm not really, I'm no offense to anybody, but I'm not really into it, you know, well, especially when my finger is worthless, but uh yeah. but you know i don't so that is over there self-defense uh they have to pay they have to pass or bill in order to have self-defense okay, in, okay. Your, in your house mm -hmm. so with a new bill funny enough you shoot somebody let's say no even shoot it you take a freaking uh, baseball bat or um, you close him inside your house that previously will be kidnapped him, by the way mm -hmm. really? uh, <laughs> yeah only only when it gets dark outside uh, yeah okay <laughs> so what i told my parents and that's between uh -huh. me, there's only a few thousand people watching maybe but <laughs> i no. told my parents no it's not a few thousand man <laughs> i guess i guess it's, it's not a few thousand yet yeah, maybe in like 10 years it'll be a few thousand so, yeah, told, you know, first case scenario pretend the blind was closed you know mm -hmm. i was sleeping couldn't see the difference between daylight and nightlight you know mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what you, you gotta always do stuff like it said you know you shoot somebody you know Thank God, I, I hope it never happening here to, you know, shooting somebody is the last thing I want to do, you know, it's yeah. Awful. So how, how's crime in Italy? Oh, awful, awful. We got a massive problem of immigration from probably starting the 80s. Mm -hmm. There's not even a, a color thing, you know, because it always changed. We got Albanian, then we got Kosovo, Kosovo, Kosovo whatever they call them, from Kosovo anyway. Mm -hmm. And then we got uh, Chinese, and back in time we had Russians, we had uh, Cameroon, Nigerian, Morocco, Algeria, all kind of possible. Everyone is in a branch, you know. Mm -hmm. Everyone's a branch, but they're controlled by the mafia. So the mafia let them sell drugs, you know. Okay. Keep on eyes. And so the problem is there's a massive immigration, and that's what the people in America don't understand. I mean, I'm open to helping people that are like escaping from wars, civil wars, and everything. It's an horrible thing, you know. I understand mm -hmm. that. But when you see people getting from getting down from a boat in Italy and they're like gym, like gym fit, you know what I mean? And the only man, you're like, okay, where are the refugees? You know, or they're, they give them food, they give them $35 a day, okay? They give them food, a place to stay, to shower, to sleep. It's not the best place in the world, I understand. But you know, if people escaping from war, they hit grass, you know what I mean? It's literal. Mm -hmm. And they complain because they don't have Wi-Fi and the food is not good enough. And they're striking on the road, they're destroying shit and everything. Yeah, I think lots of people around the world, um, you know how you were saying earlier, and I used to, I went through that when I first came to America, that there's people, there's some people that complain that people from other countries come to America and take their jobs and stuff like that. I think a lot of that's changed now because people from other countries around the world 
have gotten kind of used to this welfare system that we have here in America and they know how to game it. And they yeah. come, they go not just to America, but they go to other countries specifically to take advantage mm -hmm. of a system that they know is set up. Right, because they work in Italy. Don't get me wrong; there is good people. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. A, I mean, I'm not. Put it this way: I've never been a racist. Sometime I got mad when I was here because I've been, I've been subject of reverse racism. Okay, mm -hmm. and that happened in Palatine, and not, don't get me wrong. And I'm, it's just an example. Okay, mm -hmm. a gang member. Afro-American gang member, you know, selling, you know, selling whatever they sell, you know, mm -hmm. clearly have a uniform, you know, white tank top, jeans, all of them, you know, clearly, really, and you know, they were, you can see they were part of something going on. Police was coming all the time, busting them, and they used to yell at us, you know, uh, what the fuck are you doing over here, white guy, you know, my wife does criminal whore and shit like that, throwing rocks, throwing rocks at my dog. And, really? you know, I'm okay with everybody. I told them once, you know, they were, you know, I told them across the street, now listen, I'm Italian. Don't piss me off because I got a big backyard and I work on depot and they got plenty of concrete. Mm -hmm. That was clear <laughs> enough, I guess. <laughs> you know, that was clear. You know, I need a, you know, I, I'm I'm a good guy. You know, it's, I, don't, I, don't, I hate fighting. I fight. I fight maybe twice in my life. Mm -hmm. I tell everybody, if you see me screaming, getting mad, you better run. Yeah. So that's you interesting. Know. So you call that reverse racism? Yeah. yeah, I think it's a racist. I mean, I just right? call it. I just call it racism. Oh well, yeah, well, whatever. Yeah. You know, some people, you know, you know, I mean, it's not. Yeah, that you know, I understand why you're saying that. I just call it racism. If if people or anyone who's going against another human being based on the color of their skin is racist. Right. So you know, if it's some black people being racist to you as a white guy, I don't see it as reverse racism. I just see it as racism. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. But I understand. I, I get where you're coming from, though, with that. Yeah, yeah. Good for you. You know, I, I used to work on the EPO. I had some, you know, a guy that used to live in Mississippi, I believe, actually. Move over here. Black guy. Hard worker. Really hard worker. Work his ass off. Making minimum wage, you know. Mm -hmm. And respect him, you know, was a good friend of mine, I five all the time, you know. And then when I, I they, back going back, when they hired me on Depot, there were people that offering you, they were offering, you know, garden season, they were offering 15, 20 hours, like, no, I'd rather be home, take my welfare check, or no, maybe I don't pass the drug test. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. You know, I started the 15 hour too, and I got full time nine months later, you know. Yeah. I could, I could make, I, I got a better job now, don't get me wrong. No, don't get me wrong, I love my job. But what I'm saying is, I could make a pretty good salary on Depot, you know, because I was you doing the stuff the right way, working hard, you know. Uh, I helped the customer, you know, whatever that's it used to be, you know, and 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 work my ass off, you know, with something like I told you before, working ethic, you know, people most nowadays don't have, you know, I got a party with my friend, I might call off tomorrow. I'm like, okay, you know, I might lose your job, right? You know, so you know, so it's it's a uh, it's um it's it's a different um. I think it's I think it's um I think you can boil it down to perspective, you know, when you know what it's like where you came from and how great of an opportunity you have to be here, you appreciate it and you 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 take the opportunities, you don't walk away from things. I think there's lots of people here that don't appreciate how awesome. I mean, including my kids, man. Lots of people are born here and they don't appreciate how awesome it is to be here in America. Now, there are other people who do get it. You know, you do have a lot of hardworking Americans um, all over the country, people who appreciate having the opportunity to go out there and uh, make lives better for themselves and their families and all that. You know, I wish we had a system that we could, you know, get rid of some people's asses, you know? I mean, not just like this. I, I get people that um, don't want people from other countries coming here. That's fine. I get that. I understand that in one aspect. I totally get it. We have the same problem in Europe. Yeah. Need, but there's need. some there's some folks that are right here in America. We should get their asses out. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I wish there was a way to eject you know, them. I mean, and some people tell me sometimes, like I said before, it's like sometimes it's like, Jesus, like you're more American than most of the American I know. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I can work a little bit on the accent, maybe, but you know. But you know, the American history is full of people that help you guys during the us, I should say, probably too. During the American Revolution, they were from other country too. The American yeah. has been from people from other, you know, the old, the old, the old slavery thing is a horrible thing. Don't get me wrong, but they, after after the American, after American, there have been other slaves. They were for a while. They were Irish. They were treated like slaves. Chinese, sure, sure. you know, Italians, mm -hmm. Polish. You know, they've been how many Chinese died building the railroad? You know, the new railroad in far Everyone's west. Once had their uh, an opportunity to be a slave. It's a human being yeah. thing, and, and there's people that are slaves right now around the world in in all these yeah. countries. People that makes your freaking, you know, 
freaking computer we use, you know, are pretty much slave if you want to put it like that. But then again, you got your computer for three hundred and fifty dollars because there's somebody else is working for a dollar an hour. You know what I mean? It's yeah. always a system of which is not a horrible thing, unfortunately, but and then, you know, or you go to a restaurant, you got a waiter working for a dollar, like a dollar an hour, whatever they tell them, you know, it's an horrible, you know, they got to work their ass off or get a tip. It's kind of unfair, you know, I don't think it's a, but you know, it's a, I, I like everything here. The welfare system is kind of, eh, you know, yeah, you know, it's good. I mean, it's, a, it's a really good system, but I think it's way overpriced if you ask me. That's the only thing I don't like. Should be more affordable and everybody should pay. Everybody, whatever they can pay, you know, at least whatever they can pay. You know, some people don't pay at all. You know, that's a problem. And then uh, what are you talking about? Everyone should pay for what? Well, when you get, you know, a minimum, uh, you know, uh, system. You know, non insurance, but some kind of, you know, form of, um, yeah. I don't say insurance, but at least when they go in hospital, I know there is a bunch of people they go in hospital area. They don't even pay. You know, they tell them pay whatever you can. You know, mm -hmm. which sometimes is a form of excuse. You know, or we pay in Chicago. They have to have, we have to have a tax, okay? A tax when you buy a gun, $25 or crime tax is called, Cook County. So mm -hmm. when you buy a gun, you pay $25 extra because they call it pre prevent crime. As a matter of fact, that, that. <laughs> it's not preventing the crime of them stealing money from your pocket. That tax is probably for paying the hospital bill of the gang member that gets shot, if you ask me. That's yeah. it. So you were referring to healthcare. You're saying like healthcare. Yeah, I mean, you know, I understand okay. there's a bunch of people in poverty that cannot afford to pay, you know. Mm -hmm. But we cannot get all that, you know, weight on our, you know. Back, yeah, I you know? mean, if someone has to pay for it. So even if you don't pay for it, someone pays for it. Yeah, you know? I'm saying. That's oh. the way the world works. Yeah, there's nothing that's actually free. Someone has to pay for everything. Um, I think it's bullshit, you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you see the, the European welfare system, is a, sorry, welfare, um, medical system is a cluster for I mean, you wait six main six months for an X-ray. You know, it's stupid. In uh, in Italy, oh yeah, mm -hmm. one year for a mammography. You know, you can have a cancer and die pretty much in one year. You know, you know knocking yeah. on wood. So, do you have a lot of people in Italy that are getting into the healthcare business, like becoming doctors, nurses, and technicians, um, and things like that? You people that I know that are smart enough, they move. They move. They go in other states, other country. Okay. Because Especially researchers, you know, people that do a lot of, you know, they get more uh, funds in, in America or in other states, you know, because mm -hmm. Italy is a, it's a, it's a yeah. there's no meritocracy. It's a bunch of, it's a mafia for everything, you know, so. Yeah, right. I see 904 is in the, in the, in the, uh, in the group chat in the background saying the only thing that's free is good is, is that's good is free guns. But guess what? There is no such thing as free guns. All right. So <laughs> even if someone even if someone gives you a free gun, it's not really free because they're giving it to you for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, there's some kind of exchange that goes yeah. on, like you make a video or whatever it is. Nothing's, you know, that is a universal truth. Nothing is free. Which, you know, that, that's brings to another problem. You know, sometimes that you fed the fact that you're getting a lot of stuff, a lot of money for reviewing this stuff. You know, don't get me wrong. I understand there's a lot of production, like your video, or right. Iraqi veteran video, like a movie, pretty much. You know, there's a lot of work behind. You know, I understand somehow you gotta pay for your expensive, but you know, I I rather to I could do a better job with the video editing. Of, you know, I'm kind of old. I don't know much about technology. I get pissed after five mm -hmm. seconds. I start throwing the computer around the house. But uh, but you know. I got a bit, but honestly, I read it to be a low budget channel, at least more a little bit more, you know, you know, free from any kind of um, uh, view, you know what I mean? So, if I want to say something yeah. about the stuff, worst case scenario, I call the company, listen, before the video, I listen, is that stuff you guys can fix, you know what I mean? Or something's going to be whatever, you know what I mean? Because otherwise, yeah. it's gonna review you know so yeah all of this stuff gets complicated i see a uh, real cujo says someone paid for that free gun even if it wasn't you <laughs> <laughs> that's it yeah yeah and you know what the thing i think is um i know you were saying that, that look i don't know who gets a lot of money for doing this stuff i know that in some cases it is expensive and i think there's different levels that's the whole thing about youtube it's kind of like you're not no one's forcing you to watch anything you're actually coming in and making choices of what you want to see and um, and when you see things that have higher production values and stuff like that and you enjoy those things it takes something to do that you know the computers the software the time 
Uh, the work that goes into it, uh, all the you know camera equipment, the locations, uh, bullets. It's a, job. it's a job, you know. Yeah. Like I know, right. I know, I know, I know. Chad and Eric, you know, from Iraqi veteran, very well. And I know it's for them, it's like a full time job, pretty much. Yeah, know? those guys, uh, Iraq veteran, for example, they may they're probably one of the most successful um, gun YouTube channels. But those guys work like, oh, oh yeah. man, I'm gonna tell you right now, you or I, we don't work as hard as those guys. They are going yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah, you I know. know. I know. Um, they're, they're, you know, nowadays lately they've kind of like added crew members and stuff like that, so they're expanding a little bit. But for a long time, it was really just um, like a, a small skeleton crew of, of of folks. Not just Chad and Eric. Uh, you know, it's this there's always been a few people helping them out, and they're expanding a little bit now. But it's still hard work, and everyone that's that's uh, part of that whole thing, they're just going all the time. Yeah, no, so, I, don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is not, you know, I, I. Yeah. I Better to keep myself like that, you know. And, and I know yeah. with some some friend on or people like I want to buy I don't know a stock adapter for my AK. Like, go look the video. I'm like, and then they try and like, oh, thank you very much. That works really great to me. I really appreciate that. I'm like, that's the best. That's the best yeah. thing I can get back from you know. Yeah. yeah, I think the thing that's always important is just be honest. You know, be who you are, and and uh, the audience out there they realize it, right? They can they can they can see you and see what you're doing and and realize whether or not. You're being genuine and honest about what you're doing, and and to be honest with you, there's lots of different, uh, like 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 I just said, there's lots of different styles that people have of doing what they do. Some folks are just having fun. Some people are giving more information. Some people are just straight up like telling you, "Hey, go buy this thing." Personally, I don't try to encourage anyone to buy anything. I'm just trying to expose things yeah. to people. I, I love guns. I, I like learning about stuff, and I'm just trying to, to – when I learn something, I find that I learn better when I share my learning process with people. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. You know? That's the point. That's the point. You know, I, I rather to make an example, okay? A company sent me, okay, do – you know, some company do this, you know, even if you're a Facebook-only page, you know, share this link to, mm -hmm. uh, from our page. We see how many incoming income we got from your link. We give you a percentage, and somebody, you know, offered me. I'm like, listen, we are friends. Mm -hmm. We're working together. We are, you know, we are from the same state, same passion, same stuff. I don't want money. You know, if I need anything from you, I'm gonna suppose that. Of course, I'm not talking about a rifle, but maybe a magazine or a stock adapter, 50 bucks value, maybe to him 20 dollars. I'm sure that if I ask you to, you won't charge me full price. You know what I mean? You can help me out. Send me one for a review. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just, mm -hmm. or even forget about it. You know, I don't care. Buy me, you know, let's have a beer. You know, we are friends. I don't, I don't do for, you know, and I'm talking about, and I, my, my thing that I try to do, I try to let me make an example, simple example. I try to treat, tread, sorry, treat, sorry. Tread. Tread, no. sorry. Uh -huh. Custom, make an example. As I tread, you know, Talon grips, you know, which are two different product, two different income. If they sell a product that I review, you know, or a small company that makes homemade holster, you know, a friend of mine makes holster, you know, I love their stuff. Okay, I'll do a video, dude. Don't worry about it. You want to send me one or give me give me a deal, you know, whatever. Or uh, tell me what, you know, I, I it's 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 a, it's a it's a karma thing, you know. One of these days, I everybody's like, oh, you're doing a good job. How many, you know, how many viewers you got? One thousand three hundred and then whatever. I lost the count now. And like, you know, I don't even care. I do. Yeah, it I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and that will grow over time, man. If you're doing this, you enjoy doing what you're doing, and you, uh, you're consistent. And you're doing it. It'll just keep growing, you know. And along with that, will come lots of, uh, you know, every, everything changes as you go along the way, you know. It's like when I was a shot show the first time, I had like 900 viewers, maybe. No, no, maybe like not 200. And I also UMC, which is a good friend, you know. It took me like come over to the meeting YouTube meeting it was a one me they had a meeting the first the 2000 first like come over like listen my channel is that yay big and it doesn't matter you have a YouTube channel so you're welcome too you know and I and I and I always you know every time I see the guys you know uh, Tech Daddy you you know a uh, bunch of other you know uh, also of course now I don't remember anyone everybody you know mm -hmm. and and I always you know meet I wish I can go to the Iraqi weather and they invite me uh, brain invite me every single year you know to me is a big expense unfortunately you know I, I had a you know bathroom. I'm sure I'm sure you'll get to go one of these days. Well, when, you know when, whenever I'm done fixing bathrooms and, and whatever in the house but <laughs> but you know to yeah. me it's the fact that they keep invite me they say hi they stop by talking with me to me it's, it means a lot you know your you guys friendship you guys are big channels you know friendship is it's it's worth more than having you know 
or the people that watch my video and then it's like, oh, I would like your video. Thank you very much. And, you know, I was going to buy this and then instead I do what I told me and I save a bunch of money and I got something in the water. I'm like, to me, that, that that's worth more than everything, you know? Right. Else, but, you know, it's... Absolutely. I understand that. Okay, so James Woody says freedom isn't free in any shape or form. Uh, that's very true. And someone wants yep. to know, what is the rail system on your AK? Which one? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> so let's go. Um, uh, what do you have on the um, KV-13? The KV, I think it's called KV-UFM. Yeah, that's that's the uh, system that pretty com pretty much comes along with the... Uh, yeah, but the also, we have to say one thing. The KV comes with different sides, too. So it has a totally different side system. The KV is more like an AR-15-ish, if you want to call it like that, style, sides. So the fact they changed the side helped with the co-witness, co you know. So they help a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I like the Enger. I mean, it's a nice Enger. I mean, it's a, it's a fairly heavy rifle. You know, it's it's a, yeah. it's a you tried it. It's a vapor. You know, it's yeah, an RPK. it's heavier to begin with. It's an RPK this year. You know, it's but yeah. you know you can shoot everything, rocks, gravel, everything. You know, yeah, like, if you want to go lightweight, <laughs> you know, I mean, you're gonna have to find something else. Um, and maybe, maybe get something, yeah, you know, maybe go down to a shorter barrel, whatever. But, you know, I, I think it's a it's a good solid gun with uh, yeah. the ammo we've put through it so far. So then what do you have on the rifle dynamics? Uh, on rifle dynamics and on, let me think a second, on oh, I probably 100% of my other AKs. I have another four, I lost the count, I think, four or five. Oh, anyway, most of my AKs. I use a mix of uh, TDI slash USA made uh, lower end guards. This one is a regular, I think it's an Arsenal, arsenal actually, that come with a gun. I use normally on mine the TDI, you know, an Israeli company with a rail. So I normally put a Magpul, whatever you call the end stop Magpul thing, whatever thing. Okay. And I use, I, I use normally I find them in eBay because on the shop they're hard to find. Uh, Ultimac, railed uh, gas tube. It's an Ultimac railed uh, gas tube, which help a lot with the co-witness the the gun you know okay. and I use we got three or four different models whatever I found on eBay for dirty cheap I'll buy it the only difference is the holes cool down a little bit better the same system you got to be careful don't buy of course the one for the M92 pad because I shorter but and my other AK I use pretty much the same setup and as far as sights goes like I said the crab come with an AR style ish style crab the the rifle dynamics one Jim Fuller um, actually makes them and also modify them. So what he does, it's kind of hard to tell, unfortunately. He opened the, the here, the side with the, with the, the file. Uh -huh. yeah, they, they make also them modified already. And they round up to these two hedges. So you can send yours if you want. They, they'll do, they used to do it for you, or you can buy one from them. So that helped to focus, especially for old men like me, help to focus your, your gun when you're shooting. Mm -hmm. Now, there is another option which I don't have with me and apologize. It's a uh, um, Circle 10 AK and, 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 and Crab Custom make one thing called Pip Sides, okay? And the other one I think is a, has another name, I don't recall it right now. And Nomad, I think, is the Circle 10 AK. Anyway, they work pretty much the same principle. It's really simple sides. One has a circle, and the other one has a, a low cut, so you can pretty much. Is it something like, a, like Ghost Sides? Kind of, yeah. So, you know, if you're planning to shoot a lot, far away, far, far away, okay. is, you know, an AK anyway. But they help a lot to focus in, especially for me, I'm astigmatic. You can aim your gun very, way quicker. And Jim find out that by going to his uh, vision guy, and he told him, you know, that's a problem because your eyes are, can cannot see the shape and whatever. And, you know, so every, you know, everybody make that their own version. Um, the peep sights are easy to install, the crab and the, and see what then you need the screwdriver and a hammer pretty much and a rag. It just I did a video by the way again. Yeah, I think someone wants to know if those rails are available for an aftermarket so they can buy it to put on whatever AK they have. I think I'm not sure with rifle dynamics, but with Krebs they do sell some uh, aftermarket mm -hmm. rails. Yeah, they make two different kind. It depend on the on the model. Same story with the stock adapter, which I they make both of them as really good stock adapter that help you to convert your. Uh, rear training AK, you put a stock adapter like a block, and you can put an AR style stock, which allows you to use the six position. Which you know, Americans mm -hmm. can have monkey arms or like short arms like me. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, help a little bit. 
and they it also help a lot with the um, cheek rise okay that's a problem with the Russian AK so when you're aiming your eyes are actually rear ready to you know focus on the sides which most of the AK most of them you know your your cheek is a little bit lower because you know Russian stocks are smaller of course or, or the way they're designed mm -hmm. and you know there's a lot of stuff you can do in AK honestly crab safety is that I told everybody you want to be cheap okay buff all the internal buffer you know bolt carrier bolt buff it change the uh, trigger uh, pin retainer plate which is the thing inside you know sometimes they got a little shepherd hooks which is yeah. useless right right you can change those easy put the crab, crab safety okay which is very good if you go to the range you can keep the bolt open for the range officer yeah, so that has a little notch in it right yeah your range officer will probably appreciate that okay yeah yeah see you can do that okay now gun unloaded is unloaded of course so you do that you pretty much very easy you move it forward and it's engaged so you put your magazine in and you pretty much move it down and then the, the gun is ready to go again it's unloaded um another thing you can do you can good buy a good flash shider there's plenty of company make good flash shider i mean i review a bunch of them i think you can do is buy uh buy buy the circle 10 ak don't buy the cheap or chinese one um uh, they call it charging handle extension extended latch whatever they call it this the thing over here yeah and you like do you like the uh charging handle from circle 10 ak here let me i'll lock it on your screen that's so an, we can see that yeah that's an extended uh you pretty much is a set screw you put a little bit of loctite you slide it in and what allows you you can still use the safety okay the crab safety but again the gun is unloaded but if i'm doing this with my left i can use my left hand and see yeah. to engage the gun yeah, it moves your hand. It moves your hand, your your whole hand away from the gun a little bit, right? Yeah. So you know, instead of being like monkeying around, oh, let me you know, like you can just you know do this and, and you know. And again, when going back to crab and and, and rifle dynamics, when everybody saying you know, oh, this expensive gun. You know, if you if you know them, and I, I haven't the chance to see Jim in action, but I, I can touch the gun, you know. But I've seen this. This I have the chance that I'd be lucky enough to see. Mark doing some stuff in the crew mode and, and they put a lot of work because that's not a stock gun, you know. Yes, it's a Vepro, yes, it's an arsenal, but they put a lot of work. I mean, they file the sharp edges. They put yeah, it. if you had to do that stuff yourself on your own, um, I mean, it's gonna you're gonna probably wind up paying more than what you pay getting it from them. Gunsmith work is 50 bucks an hour. You do you do the math and see how many hours they put. You tell me if the gun is expensive. The Vepro yeah. is like nine hundred dollars, seven hundred maybe to them. Okay. Yeah, if you if you have the tools and the skills, you can definitely. Uh, do better on your own yeah but, i did come on mine i mean yeah. they work better i mean a little bit but there's some stuff you cannot do i mean when the, the trunnion is the front in front of it is crooked there's nothing yeah. much you can do you know yeah but you know it, it's it's like a, you know i just want, i, I, I want to i'm um, sorry i didn't mean to cut you off there no, i just no, want to give you a quick shout out mr holster is in the chat i don't know if you're in the chat mr holster he told me uh, a while back to say what's up to you jack Okay, what's up? So, so yeah, he says ah, this. Doggy, yes, it's Mr. Oster dog. Mr. Oster is a cool guy. He just bought a Vapor. I think he just bought some crab custom parts. Too. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I um, I, I think he's he's been uh, supporting my channel as well for some time. So, shout out to Mr. Holster out there. Okay. Yeah, go. A guest is a really cool guy. You should have been guest. He's a really funny guy. Really, really funny videos enjoy them oh cool all right so you know what let's hit up some uh, new stuff real quick here there's this article on Fox News and it's uh, called watchdog Pentagon almost gave fake cops a million dollars in guns and bombs <laughs> so you guys should go look this up it's on Fox News um, the Pentagon nearly gave over a million dollar worth of rifles pipe bombs and other military hardware to a fake police department set up as part of a government watch watchdog sting operation and um, a new report reveals using cl using cloak and dagger tactics auditors from the government accountability office GAO created a non-existent police department they submitted requests to purchase from the defense uh, logistics agency DLA uh, control properties like simulated pipe bombs night vision goggles and explosive ordnance detonation robots in less than a week after submitting the request, our fictitious agency was approved for the transfer of over 100 control property items with a total estimated value of about 1.2 million, the GAO, GAO said in a July 18th report. Nice. What do you think about that? That is good. I mean, it make me feel really safe, you know? You know, here you can, you can walk your dog, you walk your dog, you can't carry because you're too close to a park, you know? 
you know, yeah. here in Bukani, you can carry anywhere, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, and and so yeah. that's that's like the government accounting a, uh, office checking them. So that that's just makes you wonder, like, how many people, like, just normal yeah. people are out there actually spoofing these guys and making things happen that no yeah. one catches up to, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of, you know, there, there was, I think there was a couple of a training facility. They were talking about that on YouTube a while ago. The guy's supposed to be a special ops or something like that and turned out to be a, a fake felon, you know, something like that, you know. I mean, there's a bunch of people that create uh, um, fake, you know, uh, identities, you know. But the problem is that the government, I'm surprised how they don't catch them um, well, quickly, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, this is just like with um, with um, Homeland Security, you know, and all the checks in the airport. When they test them in the airport, man, they let, uh, it's a high percentage, I can't remember now, but it's, um, I think when they do, when they run the test, it's over 80% of the stuff just gets through. You know, yeah. and they're supposed well, to, I mean, and, and we're like standing in long lines. We're getting sexually abused and harassed when we're going through the lines. They're checking on little babies, you know, doing all kinds of craziness. But when, they, but when they test, when they test mm -hmm. these things, people just getting through with crap, you know. The, the fingerprint process, you know, and they took your fingerprints like so far. They took mine probably six times. I'm like, I'm still the same guy, you know. And every time they can't take the. The mangled finger, the fuck out, the screw up one, and I keep telling him, dude, I don't have a fingerprint. And I was like, oh, what? <laughs> I don't know, put like amputee or something. I don't know, but you know, it's it's crazy, you know. And again, I'm I'm okay with all the immigration process and everything, you know. And the making yeah. it when when I move over here, my paperwork was the pile of paper was taller than a can of coke. Yeah, I don't know about you when you did your stuff, but I remember back when I did my things, man. I, they even got eye eye scans of me. Wow, could be. So I don't know. I don't know if they do that anymore. But when I did it, uh, they did eye scans and all that kind of craziness. I got shots so, for malaria, yellow fever, uh, yeah. swine flu. Jesus, like, no offense to anybody, I'm like, I'm coming from Italy, you know. I'm like, it's not even a third world country, you know what I'm saying? They're like, you know, uh, well, yeah, I mean. Yeah, no, I know. No, I know. No. I, I'm not trying to offend you here. I know Italy is not a third world country. It's like you know, uh, old civilization and everything. But it's slipping back towards being a third oh, yeah, world country. Nowadays, my nowadays, friend. <laughs> nowadays, yes. I'm talking about ten years ago, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Sure. Nowadays, I, you know, let me make an example. You know? For example, here if you take a walk. You know, after, you know, there is something to do. I mean, over here downtown is not nothing. Like it's not two shops. But in Italy, most of the shops used to be downtown. Mm -hmm. You know, like in the big city. So you take, oh, let's take a walk. You take a walk, an hour, an hour, come back, you relax after dinner, you take a you cheat each other with your girlfriend, with your wife, it's relaxing. Here, if you talk, walk for an hour, think you're crazy or something. You know, in America, you know, sometimes, you know, so I'm like, you know, it's it's a, it's a different culture. Nowadays, in Italy, you can't do the same. You can't you do can that anymore? Out. Okay, because I heard there were lots of Americans that were buying properties in Italy and going there to retire. Uh, well, Mr. George Clooney, by the way, George Clooney. George Clooney. <laughs> yeah, we know he had to leave his property. Correct. In Lago di Como. He couldn't leave. If you were going to take a bath or something close to his property, you would call the police, okay? Now they open a refugee camp. Uh-huh. That's why he's running away. I'm so, like, oh, oh yeah, because I, I saw in the news we were talking about that here that he doesn't feel safe. Correct. I'm yeah. like, oh, so, but, well, he, but I thought he left Italy and he went to England and now he doesn't feel safe in England either. Or was he in Italy? Correct. Yeah. I actually had two mentioned, one in each uh, country, I think. So he's leaving both of them and coming back, I think, in Los Angeles, which is like, okay. dude, I'm like, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me give another shout out. We've got the uh, guys from Chi Town Tactical. They're also in there. They say, what's up to you? What's up? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, someone wants to know right along the lines of what you're talking about, but here in America, what do you think about the gang violence in Chicago? Um, being that you're so close to Chicago, what do you think about that? Uh, I want to say something. Probably going to start a mess or no, something. No, go ahead and say what you have to say, man. We're not politically correct here, you know. Somebody, somebody wants this situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, because they create a welfare system, okay, an education system, a cultural system, like. So being said that those rapper, you know, I like I used to like rap in the 80s, Run DMC, Public Enemy, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of good rap, you know. Mm -hmm. Nowadays it's all about banging woman, slapping woman, selling drugs, pimping money, you know, what the fuck? And you got a 13 years, 10 years old kid thinking about this stuff. Yeah, it's not even rap anymore, man. It's all it's a lot of it's it's a lot of music. It's a lot of music. Like I heard a R and B song 
where the guy was singing in the R&B song about his girlfriend snorting cocaine. And I was like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Yeah. Create, yeah when did that become cool to put in a song? No, and then, you know, you what's know the, that's crazy. Correct. And that's a, that's a problem, you know. And then you have somebody say, oh, what's the point working 15 hours? I can be home. I can see some dope on the side and, and, then, and then get my page and my welfare check. I'm like, what the f In Italy, the only good thing about Italy, it used to be at least, you are unemployed, they give you three chances, okay? You give you three possible jobs. It can be um, a shitty job, but you know, it's a job, you know, you bring money home. You know how much, you know, hours was for me working 15 hours. You know, I made it through. I got a full time. Now I got a job that I can't complain about it. You know, it's, it's a good job, you know, I, mm -hmm. I work with the cars, but anyway, you create, you create a mentality, you know, why work if I can uh, selling drugs or, or be member of a gang, you know what I mean? And then the problem is the biggest problem is the mentality, the uh, omerta, you know, we call it in Italy. So they see stuff, but they don't say anything. You know, if I see somebody shooting, yeah, no snitching. I want no snitching. If you look at yeah. a stupid example, shameless, you know, it's a TV series, okay? But they give you a common idea how the stuff works over there. You know, they they do stuff. They don't tell the police. You know what I mean? So you create a system. And I'm thinking that somebody might want to keep the stuff like that. Yeah, you know. So, you know, I definitely sorry, think the problems that people have, uh, you know, my personal opinion, uh, most of our problems, the people who could solve those problems for us are ourselves. Right. Yeah. And, and you're right. You know, a lot of this is institutional. But when the people in Chicago get sick and tired of what's going on, when they really, really, truly have had enough. And then they yeah. also stop blaming like, you know, all these uh, quote unquote uh things outside external things that they want to blame like the white man or this shit is all because of donald trump that's only been president for like six months it's all his fault yeah, you know when they when they get over stuff like that and they realize that it's them you know all the the gang violence that you see a lot of the murders that are going on in chicago's black people killing other black people when they at some point realize that it's them it's their responsibility you know they've they've elected the people the mayors and the and the governors and the congressmen, senators, or other politicians, it's specifically in Chicago, um, when they realize it's them and they're sick and tired of it, and they really want to do something with it, and they take the blame, and they and they hold them their own selves accountable. That's when they'll begin to be able to change things. Well, it's like here, you know. You see, uh, we support the badge sign. You know, so you see a neighbor neighborhood watch signs. You know. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. It means that people are taking care about themselves. You know, if I if I if I'm going away for a week, I know that there's people looking at my house. You know. Yeah, but but and you, but you know what the thing is is like there's lots of us who like I live out in the country and we don't have a lot of uh, we don't have a huge police department. You know, we don't have all these things and people. You know, we don't need all those things to be able to take care of each other. We already we just do it. We we just look out for each other, right? Well, I'm I'm five. I'm I'm I live. You know, I'm not gonna say where I live, but people might know that. But anyway. I live, I mean, live literally five minutes from the police department. Here, where I live, the police seems to be respected, you know, and they seem to be nice too, you know. If you go in Cook County, no offense to anybody, but where I used to live, the only thing that seems that I were care about is giving tickets to people, to be, to be fair with you, you know. Yeah, I mean, and then a lot of times that's because they have to generate money, right? Oh, yeah. You know, um, I think I think in a lot of cases, especially in these big cities and the ones that have these problems that are out of control, they have huge, massive police departments. Mm -hmm. They're just hiring people. Um, I think we were talking about that uh, one of these. I think we were talking about it yesterday. You know, it's a dangerous job. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a tough job to be out there doing this job. Um, you know, mm -hmm. they I don't think they take enough time vetting, screening people. Uh, properly training people. I think that the good guys that are out there doing the job aren't paid enough and all that kind of Absolutely. stuff. Well, a lot That's of these things have to start getting scaled back. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but maybe if we just scale these things back, go back to the beginning. If you gave people part of the responsibility to take care of themselves, give them the ability yeah. to defend themselves, it'll start from there. You know, it's it's helping us. You know, it's a big, it's a big you know, the fact that we back in. Our, I back, you know, I understand there. Are, don't get me wrong. There, are, <clears throat> unfortunately, there are some bad example of cops. You know, happens. I'm not saying all the cops are bad. You know, because I have good experience. You know, they stop once my wife. You know, that, you know, for you know regular stuff. You know, right. And they, 
you know, what's what's up with the with the stickers on your cars? And I had a fact on no less than now, but I was all kind of gun pro second amendment sticker. My wife, of course, got scared. It's like, oh fuck, it's my husband's car. God damn it. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no, I like those stickers. Where did you get okay. those? Like, and they were asking her, did you are you carrying them? I'm like, uh she's like, I have a license, but I'm not carrying right now. And they're like, You should be carrying. I'm like, okay. And let it go you know it's like they give you an idea you know they they focus in like in some part of illinois southern illinois they don't care about little stupid going on they're more worried about busting i don't know meth lab stuff like that you know mm -hmm. here they got more gang problem as small you know small riffraff they don't bother about the family a little family thing you know what i mean mm -hmm. unless it's a so they kind of leave you I want to say alone if you if you do you if you do your stuff the right way if you be you know you know, you know what you're supposed to be doing you kind of you know and I, like i said here and, and the fact that is the citizen what you call it the citizen you know this the, the neighbor who watch stuff you know that helped a lot you know it i feel safe you know i do the same too if there's something really rough going on i call the police mm -hmm. you know something suspicious it happened to me uh, a couple of years ago though and i saw a light you know a torch going around the, the cars and sure enough was somebody trying to steal, steal something first thing i did i pulled my lights from my back pocket and my phone and i you know you know flash them and i called a 991 you know it's what you gonna do they run away of course but you know right right maybe it was just a kid playing who knows but you know it's again it's prevention that is important you know same story with the crime in chicago a car is a big cultural thing the obama election didn't fix jack shit. you know the fact as a matter of fact i think he helped more don't get me wrong again he helped more the hispanic community than not the afro-american community the afro-american community was mad at obama with the next election the last election they won't vote for him for sure i'm pretty sure mm -hmm. most of them because they're mad at me you know it's not a, it's not anymore a racing is a, is a culture and thing you know yeah well i think some people had a misconception like uh when you become president you're mm -hmm. not regardless of who you are you know if you're a black president you're not just the president of the black people yeah I'm not, you know if, something yeah, yeah, if yeah you're if you're like uh you know if you become the first italian american president you're not the uh president for just the italian people you're the oh. president for everyone and then on the and then also going along with that you have all these people who you owe stuff to because they help put you in office mm -hmm. these are the people who really voted for you so you know those people have the loudest voice right when they're right. demanding things and with obama what we have to realize is that uh, in, in america black people just don't vote enough you know we are a minority and 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 um and then you don't get a high percentage out of black people that are eligible to mm -hmm. vote that actually vote okay. not even with obama i think there was a little bit more it went up a little bit but it wasn't uh you know it wasn't high numbers because most Listen, a lot of people in America don't vote, much less a lot of black people don't vote. I so I think I think they, you know, he um, his constituents to him were the people that voted for him. A lot of uh, white women, um, a lot of other special interest groups and stuff like that. Right. So those are the people that that I guess he looked out for first. I see the problem with the vote is also, you know, I, I don't I can't vote, of course, because I'm not a citizen yet. Well, I know yeah, although, yeah. although 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 here. There are rumors about people that were illegal. Yeah, you could probably vote, man. Just go into Chicago. I'm sure you could vote all you want to. <laughs> but you know, I won't do that. But if I was voting, see people complain, you know, I don't want to vote Democrat because they're this, I don't want to vote Republican because they're that. You know there is a third a third option, right? It's called Libertarian Party. You no, know, I'm saying it's a good party. What I'm saying is if you really want to make a change, you know. But the same story about Chicago, they keep voting for freaking Democrats since the nineteen thirties, nineteen twenties, I don't know. You know, and they keep voting the uh, Ronald McDonald manual, you know, the, the, our, yeah. you know, it's fucking, you know, it's, and they keep barking about guns. Oh, we know the name of the 10,000 gun members. So now they start busting people because they got a feds. Before, they couldn't do that. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You know how many cops they got in Chicago? I mean, if they want to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Call the army, call the National Guard. Close the section of the houses, go around like they do, you know, door, house by house, you know what I mean? If it's an extreme problem, because it's like an extreme problem, talking about, you know, thousands of, you know, they have more people dying in Chicago every year than in freaking Iraq. Yeah, there's no way they could fix this problem, El Tenda. I'll tell you why, man, because the people that they would have to go in there and go after and in some cases kill and uh, drag them out and all that kind of stuff, um, it's going to be a lot of people that look like me. 
So it's really not going to be a politically expedient thing to do. The better thing for them, they think the better thing to do is to just get up there and blame it on someone else. Okay. No, no, I'm not talking about the, the right racial profile. I'm talking about fact, you know, if they have fact on these people, you know, they know that. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. They know who the bad guys are, but they're they're not necessarily going to really go after these guys, right? Because all of this stuff works for them. This, the, the whole, the way they've set up the system works for them. And if they go after, if they actually seriously start going after these people, the there's people in Chicago that are putting people like Rahm Emanuel in office. Mm -hmm. Right, and those people are not going to be happy if they actually start going after their relatives, yeah, and their children, people, and and and, and, and all that kind of stuff too. Because you know, this is the thing. I think people just really want to be. You know, they. That's why I said to you that I don't think they really want to solve this problem. That's what I was saying in the beginning too. I said I told you too. I mean, there's some, there's a volunteer that somebody wants to don't want to fix it. There's a situation that's actually somebody's keeping up. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. you know. It might be somebody in Italy. We say it's like the immigration. There's a massive immigration, and we're door are open because there is a bunch of people eating from the same plate, you know. Right. And I'm assuming, and again, I'm assuming there's something, you know, because the, the numbers are ridiculous, man. We're talking about thousands of people, you know, thousand every, you know, and then every year. I mean, and then she gets shot. I'm talking about, eh? and then they say, oh, during the winter the crime go down. I, I bet so. Outside is zero, you know, minus whatever, 35, you know, they won't go outside, you know, I won't go either. You know, that's their answer, you know, a crime went down during winter. Oh, well, I would think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lots of, yeah, I mean, come on, man. That's when we make the babies. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But, you know, During the winter time, right? <laughs> I think it's, a, to me, I think it's a, something they want to keep like that. Unfortunately, it's a cultural thing too, you know what I mean? Unfortunately, you know. Um, a way of life they create, a, a way of life they create, and they want to keep like that, you know, because, you know, you got even white kids, you know, they go around being gangster. I want to be gangster, even now, like, like low pants, like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? You it's know? what's cool. It's there's a lot of yeah. stuff going on out there that you know, just because it's like, what's cool, right? Yeah, yeah, if your father see you, probably beat your ass, you know. And so I'm like, I, I don't get, I don't get it, you know. And then again, there's a lot of, like I told you before, I work with a bunch of. Afro-American, Hispanic people, they're great people, they're great workers, you know what I mean? And then here, they don't fuck around, you know? They work their ass off, 12 hours a day, they go home, they fix their backyard, they water their plants, they go to bed. Yeah. They might have one party, two a year, a couple of beers, no problem. Yeah. If they go to bed at midnight, they don't make any more noise, I won't even call the police. I'm, I'm, you know, it's a free country, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's absolutely. Yeah, I totally understand. You know what, let's hit some new stuff, man, let's... uh. Let's uh let's hit up some new stuff that's going on. Um, you know this is like a tragic. I don't know if you saw this in the news that at the Ohio State Fair. No, I the wheel. Yeah, there was like a, one of the rides at the state fair actually okay. just like came off and crashed and hurt a whole bunch of people, killed an eighteen-year-old. Oh, wow. You know um, this is this is horrible, and you know um I, I don't like those kinds of rides man even if i go to the fair i just uh you know i do the stuff that's on the ground <laughs> i really i don't trust those when i was younger i did all those things and my kids like that kind of stuff but i just don't think i think these things are getting more and more outrageous yeah, oh, yeah. And, dangerous yeah, yeah and therefore getting less and less safe and um you know, whether it's things like a state <laughs> fair or even the big theme parks that you have out there i just don't really you know, it's going to happen. I mean, it's just statistic. You're dealing with mechanical things, right? Yeah, so it's it's uh, one. Actually, a friend of mine was saying something really smart. Mm -hmm. Look at the guys that's actually using the machine. If the most of the time is the same guy is actually doing the maintenance. Okay, if you look in an in, they give an idea how good is the maintenance on the machine. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> But you know, yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't do that either. I'm old. I'm getting kind of afraid of everything. But <laughs> uh, well, because you know, I mean, when you're old, man, you can't recover as fast as you used to when you're young. Yeah. No, yeah. Last time I got drunk at my friend Ibomi party. Ibomi is in a YouTube channel too. We have a big party shooting, and we got you know after that in the evening, good barbecue, a bunch of beer, moonshine. Damn, took me three days for recovery. I'm getting like fuck. I'm getting old. You know. Yeah. But you know, it's it's um. It said, you know, the news that you is here's some weird stuff lately. You know, it's it's crazy. You know, it's, you know, it's yeah. Unfortunately, there's lots of stuff out going on like that. So you were in the military in Italy. What do you think about this whole thing with Obama? This is kind of, um, I'm sorry. Why did I say Obama? <laughs> I'm blaming the wrong guy, Trump. <laughs> so you I'm, see, uh, Trump. What do you think about the um, 
you know, Trump not allowing uh, transgenders in the military? I'm kind of no comment on that because I know I didn't follow the thing really well. I don't know if that was an issue about the people paying for these surgeries or less, mm -hmm. but you know, I don't want to, I didn't follow much. I can say only one thing. I got people that are gays and then free country, you know, as I say, all that's what always says, okay, you're free to do whatever you want, be bisexual, be gay. As long you you don't exceed with this stuff, you know, like when you do, don't get me wrong again, some parade, you know, sometimes it's a little bit too excessive for my taste, you know, but it's a free country, you know. Mm -hmm. If I was doing the same, like a heterosexual, they would probably arrest me, but, you know, but like, like I said, it's a free country, I don't care, do whatever you want. There are good uh, people in the army that are gays and lesbian, you know, totally respect them, they're fighting for this country too, as yeah. they are, they're Muslims, they're Hindu, Hindu they're all kinds of different religions. Mm -hmm. So it's a free country. I always says, as long as there's no kids involved in this shit, like pedophilia shit and everything like that, everybody can do whatever they want, you know? Yeah, as long as you're not hurting you someone else or taking away someone right. else's freedom. Right. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a free country, you know? But honestly, I don't. I didn't follow this thing too much. I don't want to say too much. Um, I don't think it's an issue with... Uh, somebody was pointing out being an issue about gay and lesbian community. I don't think that's the issue. I think that's an, uh, probably another, another problem. But again, I didn't follow this thing um plus i don't like getting involved in political stuff too much i mean i i have an experience in italy is to me sometimes is worthless you know here at least sometimes you you get a point in italy is pointless you change the party every you know the puppets are the same yeah. you know in italy we you change the throne the shit on the top of the throne is always the same one yeah you know what i mean so so i mean it's uh, but I, honestly i didn't follow this thing i don't want to you know i don't want to say anything inappropriate because i didn't i didn't um, English uh, went deep. The only thing I know that somebody was going against him, the fact about again being against against gay, gay and lesbian. I don't think that's the point because he had a bunch of people voting for him on that community too. Yeah, I, had a bunch of gay. Yeah, I think what I think one of the issues here, or maybe the biggest part of it, is that there's some people that are going into the military so that the military can pay for them to uh, okay. to have these operations and stuff like that. You know. <laughs> That's what I thought too. I mean, which is I like, eh, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I personally don't, you know, I think, I think I said it last night when we were talking about it. People, you know, you should take care of all of this before you go into the military or after. You know, there's a completely different purpose for it. But like I said earlier as well, it's like people are just figuring out how to game the system and everything. You know, it's what's happening in America. It's why our emergency rooms are being overused because we really don't have a good healthcare system regardless of what we had now, what we had before. Um, this is probably worse than what we had before, but it was, a, it was a problem before that. And people are just figuring out how to game the system and going, okay, I'm just gonna you know, go into the emergency room. I'm just gonna give fake information and get over, and then someone else is gonna pay for that. So, you know. I mean, because the gay community, I, I, see, I believe, I hope so, like gay or like I said, from American, Hispanic, Muslim, I, I hope they treat the same equal level they were treat, they are treat all the same level, sorry, in the army, whatever branch they are, not like in back in World War II when they have a division of Afro-Americans, you know what I mean? They keep them separating purpose, you know, and they send them do the, you know, the hardest job or whatever. But, you know, nowadays, I'm, I'm assuming they're all at the same level, you know what I mean? If I was joining the army, it was, you know, as long as you do your stuff, I heard bad thing about people from, uh, I believe it was, what's the island? One of those, uh, anyway, they were trying to get a citizenship, okay? The quicker, quickest way to become citizen when join the United States Army, okay? They went to war, they come back, and they didn't get the citizen yet. Okay. A bad thing, because somehow they served the country. Yeah, they somehow. held up their end of the bargain. You know, so, you know, that, that way I would be mad. I understand there's some people doing the purpose, but they're not like they're playing softball or soccer and they get a citizenship they're fighting in the first line you know and they get you right. know iraq and that's so they show up to being good citizens if you are proof of being you know loyal i guess i guess i mean yeah. i don't know i could no i understand where you're coming from okay so uh here we've got a question here what's your recommendation for someone who's buying their first ak <sighs> Well, the problem is right now with the market, I had some good recommendation a few months ago. Nowadays, 
Well, let's put it this way. Depend what you want to do. Okay. Yeah. AR AK equal. Okay. You're a weekend shooter. Century Army is fine. You know, good price, entry level rifle. You know, you you you're gonna shoot it maybe thousand around a year. It's fine. Yeah. Do you prefer something that's uh, stamped versus milled or milled versus stamped? Which one do you I, think? I got, I got both of them. Milled, of course, it's a little bit more heavier and everything, a little bit better receiver. I don't. That point doesn't make any difference to me. I mean, I, I'm okay with that. But either one. I would love if I was going for us. I mean, millet are of course a little bit better, but um, as far I mean, they used to be my recommendation used to be um, lately used to be actually um, sorry, not bumbling. Uh, Vapor. There was a Vapor for less than thousand dollar and an Arsenal for less than nine hundred. Remember that? Yeah, I'll go for the Vapor anyway. So now there's kind of like the Vapor ban. From what you've seen, is it okay. are, are we really like is, are Vapor scarce now? Uh, from from people that I know, they, 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 there are some of them out. They've been, you know, they're still available, but the price went up. Whoever got the chance to buy them, they gotta go from the same channel over here in the United States. I think it's Kvar the importer. Okay. I'm not one hundred percent sure. Okay. Uh, but you know, I wish I bought a shotgun, uh, a Vapor shotgun. I love, you know, I told you, like I said, I. Eastern block. I mean, I mean, I don't bash any company. Honestly, I don't work with. I'm not an extremely yeah. fan. I've I've seen if some Vapor shotguns still out there. I think uh, one yeah, I mean, big daddy gun. Yeah, yeah. So if they're they're floating the around. One, right. If you buy the one with the with the hunting configuration, like the ugly one, and you can work on it. If you don't care, then it's an hunting rifle. I mean, you know what I mean. That's fine. But you know, some of them were important as an hunting rifle. Then they get converted in anyhow. But you know, uh, if I was going for a century again, like I said before, I probably go for. Um, the M70, I like them. There's friends that have them. They don't. They didn't, never had the issue with those. I have two. Wazer, okay, a 1063, and the other one, I don't remember the name. One under folded, the other one normal. So far, I found only one issue on them, which is the you know the front side was a uh, front you know, you know the front only was a little bit um, crooked, just a teeny. I mean to be picky. Other than that, I shot probably three thousand around. They were fine. So, again. When you when the gun get imported as a kit, dude, it's like if I port if I got an order for one thousand rifle in my work and I teach somebody to do the rifle, sooner or later it's gonna fuck up something. Even if mm -hmm. I fix it, you know, I can miss something. You know, everybody can miss. Or maybe there is a defective part that you put on the gun and you don't know about it. You know, like a right, trigger. Until, yeah, oh, until it breaks. Or something else. You can trigger. It's not your fault. You know, but you're gonna lose your uh, face because of the part. Even if you don't make it, you know. Because you put your face in front of it, and and you know. But I mean, I tell everybody nowadays. I mean, that's there's not a lot of choices. I mean, and I, I somebody was talking about what's the company that worked with uh, Matt? Uh, sorry, with the military Arm channel team. He works with a company that makes AK, an American company. Uh, I don't recall the name right now. If you look up on Copper Custom, they have, a, and I saw the view on the rifle. They're pretty good actually. Uh, is um, it the DDI? BDI is the one got bought by Palmetto. Yeah. yeah. BDI yeah. got bought by right. Palmetto. They, mm -hmm. they, they were going the right way. Mm -hmm. They were going the right way. But it's actually, I already called the name. Uh, but anyway, if you look up on uh, Copper Custom page, you can, you're going to see them. And and uh, like I said, there is there is a bunch of you, let's put it this way, before you buy one, there is a bunch of YouTube channels you should watch and, and learn. You know, I, con I, con I suggest everybody, uh, other than the big name, which sometimes I don't like, is uh, one of them is called Ziki. Like Zeki, I can I can put it on the on the chat here. Mm -hmm. Zeki, shoots shots. I don't recall. I, I might spell it wrong, but anyway, it's a guy that does review. Uh, like it shoots like four thousand round or on a K five. Oh, okay, that looks that's spelled like Zeke shoots. Yeah, -E something like that. Okay, uh huh. And then when he's done, he takes down the gun and he check every single part. Okay. He send out to check deformation and everything. So that's a really um, good way to test the gun. Because you're going on, mecha you know, physically checking the problem. Yeah. And, you know, I again, I don't, I, I, honestly, I, I have, you know, bashing a company, to me, I, if I don't try a gun, I cannot do that, you know. I got, I got lucky with the Canic so far. I I, I, did, I wasn't lucky, like, same lucky with the SIG uh, P320C. I got to send it back to SIG Sauer. Yeah. So price nowadays doesn't matter because there's a massive production of guns. So somewhere... They're gonna be a, a, a you know the more you produce 
there gonna be a flow in the in the in the process, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I understand that. Again, I'm right. So, um, okay. So here's one more question. Um, someone says, uh, you don't like Berlusconi? <laughs> that question comes from uh, LD Vulture HQ. <laughs> I don't know I mean, what that's about. Berlusconi was amazing. It was awesome. He got job for everybody. It's the only guys were involved in, in a prostitute scandal. It's like, oh, you're jealous. <laughs> everybody, you're fucking jealous. You know, it was awesome. I love it. It's like, Berlusconi was like Trump pretty much. No, actually, less smart than Trump. Because Trump is actually a smart person. Berlusconi created a lot of works in the, in the 1890s. Of course, you know, kind of mafia style works. But, you know, it has its pro and cons. In Italy, the left nowadays is no better than the right, you know. Yeah. They create a situation, you know, if you don't All like... All over the world, man. America is a lot like that, too. Yeah. If you don't like the immigrants, let's put it this way. If you don't like the way they hacked or in Italy, because they, they destroy stuff, you know, they attack people, they damage property, they, they you know, they do disaster. They, you know, they pee on the street, they take a shit on the street. And if you don't like them, you're ignorant. Yeah, yeah, you know, I know. You know, it's not, you know, I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, yeah. you know, they go on the train, they attack the guy that checked the tickets. I don't know you call it in English, but... And the guy that checked the ticket attacked by them, you know? Right. Women get a, nowadays get a, We call it in English the ticket checker, dude. Ticket checker, okay. <laughs> no, and, I'm just, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. In, in, in Sweden and Germany, they got a, in, the rate of rapes went up skyrocketing, you know what I mean? With immigration, you know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's crazy, you know? And it's, it's yeah. like, it's not a matter of being racist, it's a matter of they don't want to integrate, you know what I mean? Right. Okay, so let me ask you something now. I, I see that you've got the canic there, obviously, but what other kind of handguns are you into? Do you have other handguns? Uh, I gotta go and get them, but <laughs> yeah, but I'm just curious. Were you are you uh, like a Glock guy? Are you into the Smith and Wesson? I, I respect the Glock. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm 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 Italian, so I kind of like the aesthetic of the guns. So okay, <laughs> I understand. Okay, so the Glock, the Glock to me is like a center block with a trigger, uh -huh. but you know. But you know, I, if I was deploy or something or duty, I would probably use a Glock. Okay, I, I mean, so okay, so you you know, do you have Berettas or something? Or I wish no, I don't. Okay, I just, one Beretta specific I like is the M eighty five. I think it's called the little one in three eighty, the shorter version of the M ninety two. Okay, I I don't. I have a couple of nineteen elevens. Okay, they are most most of them in nine millimeter actually. Yeah. If you want to go grab some guns, you can go grab some guns, man. I'll show you something. So what do you think about gun locks? Because, you know, we were talking about people sending you stuff, and someone sent me a gun lock. What do you think about gun locks? Uh, I mean, if you have a kid, maybe, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I know. I know a lot of gun guys don't like gun locks. So there's this company um, called Identalock. Okay. And check it out. Here's a here's a gun here's a gun lock from them. I'll lock it on me here for a second so you guys can see that. So they sent me this. Now, obviously, this gun's clear and everything here. We checked it. And basically, this is, you know, it locks it in there. It's around the trigger guard. Can't get it out. And then check this out. Put my finger on there. Unlock it. It's out. Okay. So that's just for... So this is so this is something. So for example, like me, you know, I've got safes and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I don't necessarily need these. But you might want to have guns somewhere around the house where it's not in a safe. It's in a drawer right. or something like that. But you still want it to be um, you still want it to be safe where, you know, you, you're if you've got younger kids, they can't get in there. This works on your fingerprint. So you put your finger oh, okay. on here, and if you got to put it in the right way, it will work with mine. Huh? It won't work with my finger. I don't have one. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. That unlocks it. Right? That's Let's cool. See. Yeah. So hold on. Let me see if we can get it to do it. It's not actually doing it right now. There you go. I made, I made the sound. I'm, I'm assuming it just did it. Yeah. No, I think the battery. Oh, the, no, it opened. Okay. So it's open. And then you put it in. You lock it. Gotcha. So I just got this today. So you put it in here. You put it. Lock it in. There you go. Locked in. Right? So let's say you're in a hotel or you're staying at a friend's house or something like that. You know, you're traveling on the road. This is not too heavy. This is what it's supposed to be. We're going to actually test it. And it's okay. rechargeable. There is a key. So if the, uh, you know, if that doesn't work, the, the battery dies or whatever, there's a key that you can unlock it. It's rechargeable with uh, USB somewhere on here. There we go. There's the USB Gotcha. Charger for it. You can store several fingerprints in the computer and all that kind of stuff. Okay. You need access to it. There you go. You got access to it. And it's called Identalock. 
got the box here. There gotcha. you go. Identa lock. That's. I'll, I'll do. I'll do something on the channel with this thing. Just wanted to test it out. I mean, they're making it's universal or works only with Sungams? Well, okay. So this one is the uh, GLKA one, which is for a Glock. But I think gotcha. they have them for different guns, like probably Smith and Wesson, and you know your popular guns that are out there. We'll we'll do something more detailed. Um, and if and you guys can let me know what you think about this kind of stuff. Uh, you, you know, I, I'm in the category of like uh, when I buy something and it comes with those locks, I always throw the locks away. But there are some situations where you may want to lock something, like maybe in your car. You know, you have it stored in the car, but you don't want anyone to have access to it, so you you put it on something like this. You have to because. Um, I believe in Cook County, Illinois, you have to have a lock in your gun. I don't know if it's only if you have a minors or in general, you have storage in your gun, which is stupid. Because if I'm my house, somebody breaking, you know, I'm assuming it's only if you have kids. But again, it's pretty stupid still. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, the, 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 you call it the link, uh, you call it the cable safety, you know, the one with the, the cable lock. Yeah, right. Which is stupid. By the time I pull it out and I put a magazine, I mean, it's... Yeah, so that's the thing I like about this, right? So if I pick this up and put my hand on there, I mean, it just unlocked it. That's pretty fast access to it. Yeah. You know, I mean, hey, it's something. You know, it's using technology that's out there. I like the fact that it works on USB, so <laughs> the batteries die, and then you realize you're in your car, and you realize, oh, the battery's dead. You, could, you, could, you know, everyone's got a USB charging thing in their car nowadays. Yeah, can I can ask the attacker if you can borrow a charger for a second? Let yeah, me. well, yeah. If you're waiting until someone attacks you, <laughs> you're pretty charger. much yeah, you're pretty much in trouble. <laughs> well, you know, I have going back, but say yeah, I got a, I have a, I have a gun safe, uh, but I need to buy a be, um, a bigger one, a better one. I'm thinking okay. about buying Liberty. I was gonna contact Liberty if I'm interested. There is a dealer over here, a range where I go, one of the two ranges where I go. Um, it's called uh, the range is called um, Second Amendment, and and they're a dealer. Of them and was asking listen can we talk with liberty maybe you know we can do a video at your shop showing the safe that you sell and maybe that somehow we can work on a deal you know again another example you know maybe they do delivery for free i'll take it you know right. delivery is expensive so um i have a several end gun i'm not a big end guy and gun guy sorry because of my um trigger uh, finger you know trigger finger is pretty much screwed so it doesn't help a lot with the shooting with a gun okay Oh, I gotta compensate with my left hand a lot. Okay. okay. So I have, like I said, I have a, I got a few of them, like a few. I'm a big, big fan of 1911s. I have the only double stack that I have now, working condition, is the Canic, which I like it again. So you do one. you um well I guess are you able to get a CCW? I did, and it's actually pretty expensive. I do believe uh, if I, don't, I recall properly, with fingerprint and everything, was five hundred bucks. Okay, so you have a concealed weapons thing. Do you carry? Do you um, carry concealed? Now I gotta kind of improve. I had my six hour with me. I work technically. Technically, I work. We don't need one because it's private property. But you know, so you can open carry. So what would you know? So what do you do to compensate for the for that? You know, the pad of the finger being missing. Well, I gotta buy a gun that has a decent trigger. I hate the sh the shield was perfect as far concealed. The trigger was horrible to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mechanic is perfect. Perfect. The SIG is getting there. I might change the trigger. The can the trigger come with the canic. I don't know. It's pretty good to me. Okay, so you find that you're able to articulate that and it works. You know, you can do a decent draw and everything. The gun is of course unloaded. Right. Mm -hmm. So I mean, to me, it's like. The trigger is like really crispy. I mean, if you try, I mean. Oh, okay. Yeah. Really good trigger. I mean, it's and again, yeah. it's for less than 400, for 400 bucks, you get a Seracota, nice size, two magazines, yeah. a nice grip. I put on mine, all my guns, I put the, most of them, put the talon grip, you know, the, the sticky mm -hmm. ones, and it mm -hmm. helps a lot. It feels good in your hands too. It's a little big for concealed carry. The six hour is better, but again, now it's at the freaking, you know, six hour. Now I gotta go old school. <laughs> so, okay, so you so do you do you like the revolver? What revolver is that? That's an old. Let me check. Of course, get unloaded. It's unloaded. Oh, you can see it, kind of. Why? Right. Just in case nobody behind there anyway. So yeah. anyway, and the Taurus uh, ultralight. It's an oh, old a little bit. Oh, okay, it's an ultralight. It's been in the family for a while. Okay. It's fine. The only thing I don't like is the grip. I do know they make some aftermarket. 
bigger grips a little bigger yeah. isn't that is that that looks like a hog grip that's on it i guessing is a taurus taurus, uh, oh, it's a taurus? okay okay yeah you can get from hog you can get some grips yeah like a little bigger one it's actually i love shooting 38 and and, and i think the 38 is pretty it's, it's a pretty you know i mean close this and distance at 38 is a pretty nasty round you know mm -hmm. i mean it, yeah I mean, yeah i don't want to get shot by one <laughs> No, I mean, but I don't want to get shot by anything. I don't want to get shot by a BB gun or a twenty-two. So, you know, it's a freaking, you know, it's, you know, I got a bunch of powder too. So we reach far away too. I mean, yeah, it's a pretty good ammo. I mean, it's a nine. You know, of course, the the the, the Sig is a better gun for concealment. My wife has a uh, what's the two three eight, three two eight. The the six hour. The like, the one looked like a nineteen eleven in three eighty. Oh, in three eighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do the same thing. It's stupid. And plus, doesn't doesn't shoot steel case. Doesn't like all the point. What's the freaking point? I mean, what's you know, what's the point? A gun should be like a Glock. Mm -hmm. Pretty much everything through it, you know. No. What are you gonna do? Oh no, wait, I can't shoot that. Let me pick up the other ammo. You know, it's yeah. You know, so it's, what's your EDC, man? What do you EDC? What do you what what's your everyday carry uh, stuff? EDC, uh, I don't have anything with me right now. But anyway, I have a SOE tactical a wallet. I have a so when you're in your house, you're not carrying anything. Well, I keep there's plenty of stuff for each and, and re within reach. reach. Okay, so when you go out, what do you typically carry? You said um, when, I leave, when I leave the house, I put away everything. When I'm in the house, I reach something. Obviously. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was I was listening to you. You're telling us what your EDC is on a regular basis. I have knife anywhere too because I like using it for open packaging. Uh, um, right now, I have a crudo with a K. Crudo, Krona knife. It's a friend of mine that makes knives. Really nice, really compact, really good, flexible. If you know what I mean, knife. Mm -hmm. And I have a self-defense tool, plastic tool, self-defense tool, which can be a good alternative in places where you can carry a weapon. Okay, that's a good idea. And they, they're cheap too. It's plastic anyway. Um, Knife, I heard they want to pass a bill in Illinois. I think it's Illinois only. I'm not sure about it. To, uh, if you have a concealed carry gun, you can have also a knife with you now. They want to pass it. Like a bigger knife, you know, like a, like a fixed blade, you know, with a Kydex shit. Shit, shit, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Sorry. And now I'm planning to buy a, a Vulture equipment. Um, works knife it's a company like I was talking before it's like an hour from me uh, I did a couple of video about their product recently and uh, I'm really impressive really friendly people really open to reviews and stuff and they make a couple of really cool blades fixed blade you want a good knife has to be a little bit pricey you know it's not made in China it's made over here with good material but you know it's I think it's worth it it's not a knife used to open boxes you know I always have a box cutter with me the knife, mm -hmm. the other knife is not for open box. It's when when the gun doesn't work, you might have something else, you know. Okay. And they, when you do classes, they teach you also to keep the knife on your left side because if somebody trying to reach your gun, you can use the knife for something else, you know, or you know. Right, that makes sense. But you know, it's it's um, ADC wise. I'm not. A, I have a multi tool with me. I have a, a, a go home bag. I call it with me. I did a video about it too. It's a Drago backpack with a bunch of stuff. I did a video about it, and people seem to like it too, by the way. With a little mm -hmm. kit, fire kit, a little, uh, again, that goes back to the prepping stuff, you know. Um, a little snack, uh, socks, clean socks, because that's important, you know. People don't realize if your feet are wet, experience in the army, you're, and your feet goes off, you know, destroy your feet walking, you're pretty much done, you know, because you can't walk without missing. I had my skin coming off under my feet when I was in the army. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, You're pretty much useless, you know. You, you, what are you gonna do? Can't walk in pain, you know. It's horrible, mm -hmm. awful. A little shelter, you know. It's, um, you know, it's that's my ADC in general. Uh, everybody asks me what's the best prepping stuff. I tell them the main thing you have is this thing right over here. The brain, the brain. takes you everywhere. Yeah. I did stuff I mean, when I wasn't doing airsoft. I have, which is a game, but we were doing with Recon, you know, checking OBJ. In, engage don't engage the enemy i'd sleep in creek yeah airsoft is good training man yeah we we did stuff with the my 
think about it now i'm like what the fuck make me do that i'm like i'm working like 50 miles walking for 50 miles like minus 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 uh, celsius great it was like cold you know mm -hmm. and sleeping, eating you know bars sleeping in places like nobody will think about it and it was it was fun man you train for that you go running is a motivation you know i had it's a good way of life you know it's at um it's a peaceful way to get ready for something else if you want to put it like that you know mm -hmm. because i you know it's like same the prepping all the prepping stuff everybody's like oh prepper like crazy i'm like no listen in america in america there's only three days worth of food in a supermarket okay so if this is a storm ah bless you i won't be the dumbest running to buy ramen noodles at walmart <laughs> yeah plenty of stuff that's a little weird you know yeah. you know it's it's and you know it's main and it, it's, it's you know you it also prepping you gotta think about this thing okay and, you know, not, not clean on wood, you know. She can work for three months. How are you gonna afford to buy food? Okay, now you got three months, four months really worth of food in, in your in your pantry, you know? And yeah. that it doesn't be fancy stuff. You only need is rice, beans, you know, you can survive. It won't be a healthy diet, but you know it's right. yeah, you know, when you're prepping prepping, you're not just prepping for some major apocalypse, you know, like an asteroid hits the planet or the zombie apocalypse. I mean, you know, there's micro apocalypses that happens. There's personal stuff that happens to you. So, it, you know, life could be terrible for you right now, but not everyone else. And you just want to be prepared for that. Especially, no offense again. Sorry, in America, you know, you got a flood or something that complete a storm completely paralyzed the system, you know, mm -hmm. because everybody, if you need anything, you got to go and drive a car to, you know, mm -hmm. unless you got 7-Eleven close to you. Sorry again. But, you know, it's, that's the problem. You got to think about this mentality. You live in a big city. If you live in the middle of a bum fuckerville, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do? You know? yeah. And again, it doesn't take, doesn't take a rocket scientist. You buy some mylar bag, you know, also UNC did a, a good series of video how to do this stuff. It's stuff you, if you do, can do watching the TV, television, you know? an iron and some mylar bag and some rice and beans. Track, five gallon bucket, put it away. You know, yeah. you don't need to buy the $50 survival food you know they sell you like now everybody's selling you can do your own survival food, you know survival you know what i mean yeah you, mm -hmm. walmart buy a couple of cans of whatever you eat i told everybody don't buy the garbage if you don't like baked beans don't freaking buy it because you know unless you want to trade with somebody you know but buy whatever you're going to use you know eventually and like beefaroni and stuff like that i don't not a fan of but you know once in a while i can eat a can you know if you're freaking rock. starving to death it, it'll be it'll taste awesome yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, the army we got, we were without food for a couple of days. You don't want to know what we hit. You know what I mean? It's we were looking for any kind of thing with four legs. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I had <laughs> a woman. my grandfather was my grandfather brother, my uncle. Sorry, was in Russia during the retreat. They were eating, you know, rats and 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 pigeons. You know what I mean? So, yeah, absolutely. You got to hit us up with some Italian curse words, man. I'm about to wrap it up, but I I want to hear. Okay, some Italian. Don't waste your time. Yeah, hit us up Thank with some Italian that. curse words, man. You know. <laughs> Oh, if I go for I go for F yourself can be vaffanculo. There you go. <laughs> no, okay. But you know, can I, can I say something before I close? Absolutely, and, yeah. I, and I ask everybody, please subscribe, come over and see me. Thank you, very Hank and Lola. Uh, there is a good friend of mine. It's called the the. I'm gonna write over here the crazy. Okay, Scotsman. Scott. The crazy Scotsman. Yeah. Okay. He's doing. He's doing one thing for for one friend of us, C, C Max. We we've been doing a bunch of stuff. Ibomi is doing some money for veterans. Mm -hmm. You know, helping veterans. He's doing a, a raffle. Okay. It's ten ten ten. Sorry, ten dollar for one ticket and fifty for five or six. I don't remember. Okay. It's not even important what you win. There's a bunch of stuff, but he's collecting money for helping a friend of us, okay. which is having a cancer. And he's trying to to pay the expenses for the treatment, which, as you know, are really expensive. So, if anybody, please go and check. Would be lovely if you can go and check it out. I did a little donation too. A anything can help. We did the same with veterans and Ibomi and, and all the crew. They collect like 15 grand. I mean, it's it's amazing, you know. Uh, okay, they're, cool. They're... Yeah, send us a link. Um, like either email me or something like that, or text me a link. And then I'll throw it in the description of this video. So folks who listen to this on iTunes, because we've got, you know, we're up on iTunes <laughs> as well, you know, they can, uh, we'll, we, we should tell them to check out the Crazy Scotsman, right? Yes, yeah, Crazy Scotsman, I, I'll send you a link later on somewhere yeah. in Facebook or whatever. I mean, it's a really right. good guy, really, really mm -hmm. supportive. It's an immigrant too. So, you know, okay. legal. 
<laughs> to. <laughs> right. Right. Hey. But, but you know, it's uh, it's uh, you know, it's, it's I appreciate. It. Other than that, I, I appreciate. It. Thank you, you and Lola. I thank everybody and thank all the company that have been helping me in these two years. I mean, and all the people that are watching the video that support me and my my wife being patient. That's the main thing. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, and, and how do folks find you, man? So you, you're on YouTube, you're on Instagram, you're on Facebook. How do they find you? Uh, okay, in Instagram, let me check how I show up. On uh, in Facebook, it's more like a you can come and see me. It's more like a personal slash YouTube thing. It's called El Tenda Vianeo. And uh, on uh, let me check on Instagram. And El Tenda, you spell it E L T E N D A, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Let me how I show up on on uh, El Tenda Vianeo. Same thing. El Tenda Vianeo. Same thing. Yeah. Uh, you so know what I was doing? I was like call it, like I was spelling your name El Tienda, which is a Spanish thing. I think that's like what's El Tienda is the store, right? Uh, store. Yeah, yes. Yes. The yes. Store. Yeah. So it's not El Tienda. It's El Tenda. Tenda. Yeah, Tenda, like T E N. So El Tenda, that's what it is. El Tenda. And if you if you're searching YouTube, it's just El Tenda Fabricio. Yep. Yep. You find Actually, it on YouTube. And what did yep. you say? The Facebook one was El Tenda via via Nail. Via Nail. Okay. And what's the Instagram? Instagram, same story. Okay. Oh, you can go. You can go on YouTube on the top or the right. 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 There is an icon you can click. You can go to the Facebook page, Instagram page, and whatever. And and if you subscribe, which I remember for anybody is a, uh, is on YouTube, uh, you subscribe to the channel on the bell. There is a doorbell or whatever you want to call it on the right side. They give you the updates. Uh, sorry, they send you an email every time somebody uploads something. Yeah, the notifications. A bunch of people. I don't know. I, like I said, I don't have a lot of subscribers. I only have one thousand three hundred. Yeah. Now I think someone asked in the chat earlier. I just remember this. Do you have a Patreon? No, I don't. You don't. Okay. I don't. I don't want to either. Honestly, no, no offense to anybody. I don't. I don't. I don't feel like it's necessary now to me. If I will evolve more, you know, if I was gonna have somebody help me with the video editing, so I'm gonna pay somebody. Uh, or gonna be traveling like for Iraqi veteran something like that. I will eventually. Okay. For now, I'm a self. Uh, what do you call it in English? Self. Uh, self funded. Anyway, self funded channel. I mean, the only thing I might get once in a while is a good deal from people. Uh, stuff for review. Um, yeah. The biggest thing that make my channel going is friend supports and, and company supports. Respect. Yeah. Actually, more the support, which is main means a lot. Yeah. You know, absolutely. I want to encourage everyone to go uh, check out your YouTube channel, help uh, El Tenda grow his YouTube channel. Is that it? Did you want to plug something else, man? No, brother, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, I mean, anytime you want to hang out, do something, give me a call. I mean, Absolutely, more than man. It was fun. Come in Illinois. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you want to come visit us in Illinois, I'll take you to see Crab. I'll take you to see the Arguns LLC. I'll take you to have some good, we got some freaking good Mexican food, that's for sure. Okay, cool. Yeah, if I'm coming through, no I'll pizza. definitely take you up. No pizza, Italian food, because I, I get a little bit offensive. <laughs> oh. over, here, oh. over here, there's no no competition. There's not. No, I mean, America, no yeah, offense. Yeah. yeah, I get it. I get it. You're from Italy, so it's uh, you know, um, I, I, I'm I'm a little you know, I I discriminate against uh, even here in Florida. There's lots of pizza shops that say they're Italian, and uh, I don't think they're Italian unless they know what Zeppelis are. But I don't know. In Italy, do you guys even actually have Zeppelis? Yes, I think it's a southern thing. It's actually, yeah. I don't know if it's Pugliese or Sicilian. I'm not sure about it. Because, I mean, Italy is a small country, but we have 22 regions, I think. And every region has several languages. Venetian is actually a language. It's not even a, yeah. a dialect. Right. So you know, we are pretty proud of it. But if you, if you ever want to go to Venice, you, you let me know. I'll, oh. you, I'll hook you up. Yeah. I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> you can go shooting. But at least you got good food. You know, yeah. But, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, maybe we can go shooting. Maybe we'll get Instructor Zero. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, he's a common friend. A friend of a friend. So it's a, yeah. it's a it's friend of 73. So we, yeah. we can do that. Yeah. Instructor Zero promised me if I somehow wound up in Italy, we're going shooting and we're driving Lamborghinis and Ferraris. So we'll All see. Right. I, can, I can take a ride on the corner if you want to. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. Do the whole thing, man. So I can, we, just got, we just need to save the money now to actually take our butts to Italy. It's freaking expensive, bro. It's like three grand. 
Yeah, I know, I know, man. But I, hey, I would do it, man. You know, it's worth it to do. I want that family. I got relatives over there. To me, it's priceless. But sometimes I go back only for my wife, honestly. I mean, to me, I don't get like a kissing asses or something, brown nose or anything. To me, that's now, that's my country. Yeah. Now. I, I would love to see it, man. But the big thing, I mean, I'm a car guy too. So I definitely want to go to like Ferrari and see the, you know, okay. Ferrari Museum and, uh, and the that's same thing fun. with Lamborghini, man. Those are, you know, beautiful cars that, that I had as posters on the wall. So, and one of these days, you know, one of these days, I got to get a Lambo. Okay. Yeah. I can buy you one, if you, a not wheel one. Maybe. Oh, Hot Wheels. <laughs> hey, whatever. I'll take it. It's a start. <laughs> All right, man. So let me wrap this up. I want to give a quick shout out. Look, I'm going to show my shirt. I'm rocking like the Black that. Guns Matter. Got this from Madge Toure, who was on the show. So I'm rocking the, this looks like the teal blue Black Guns Matter shirt that he sent me. Thanks a lot. I want to shout out to Maj. I want to thank everyone that's been watching, commenting. we got a bunch of people watching, commenting on the show and all that kind of stuff. I want to especially thank Altenda for coming on the show. Really cool guy. I want to thank all the people that sponsor us. So we, you know, we do have people that sponsor the channel. That would be Safety Harbor Firearms, Rand CLP, and Andrew's Custom Leather, and of course, Big Daddy Guns. Big Daddy Guns, we're in the studio right now of Big Daddy Guns. And, uh, you know, we can't forget, we are on Patreon. And we do have people that support us on Patreon. It's Patreon slash Hank Strange. So that's it. Altenda, what you got something else to say? You want to get the last word? I love you guys. I mean, I'd say if you if you any auto, if you find any master universe in your basement, send me to me. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Quick plug for the masters of the universe. Peace out, guys. It's been fun. Thanks a lot. Peace. Yeah.